Hello and welcome to the February 2015 edition of the TetraCast. My name is Zach Reese. I am your host. Joining us today is a nice panel of guests to help go through all the activity that's been happening in the past month. Starting off, Adam Vitali. Hey. Thank you very much for joining us. And Simon Chun. You messed up how you messed up the word February. You're like sort of. Uh... I got a speech impediment. Thanks for pointing Wait, it out. Wait, do you really? I'm really yeah, sorry. I can't say I my words. I'm uh, so sorry. People who listen to me talk on the podcast might understand or hear you by the my seashore? Best. I don't have a lisp. Oh. What do you mean, I sell seashore? Se- uh, what? <laughs> anyway, moving on. No, I can't. Apparently, I can't. <laughs> Seashells by the seashore. No, it's my, my R's sound like W's. That's, that's pretty much... I can't say out my R's correctly. So, enough of... We'll go back to that. We'll enough go back of that. that. So... <laughs> Yeah, we'll come back to that later, I'm sure. We'll talk about it. Then Darren McPhail is back again. Back again for the fourth, third time in a row, something like that. Something like that. Back again with a brand new edition. Yeah, that's what I do. That's what I do. Glad to be back. Of course. And finally, 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 we have Elizabeth joining us hello, today. Hello. You didn't say your last name, bro. Why? I totally forgot her last name. I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, like she's going to you. Sorry. <laughs> uh, to be perfectly honest, I actually just opened up the website and tried to find your name, and Darren stopped so quickly. I was like, oh, God. Back, I don't remember anyone's fucking last name, Reese. <laughs> oh, that's, that's just me. That's my nickname. It's a really long one. I, we're actually making new business cards. Did actually make kind of, of you for, like, your last name whenever you're growing up, like Reese's Pieces or anything like that? No, of course not. How could that okay, ever I happen? Think that's, I can just take that level. Kids are very kind to you when you're a Okay. Like growing up, you know, yeah, that I never bullied you. Never made fun of me or my weight or anything like that. It was sad. Hey, it's okay. My, anyway, my name legally wow, yeah. the longest time was called Sue, so it's okay. Really? What? How did it become? Well, I that? mean, my Korean name is Sue Min, but you don't say Sue oh. Min as your first name because Min becomes your middle name, so you say Sue. So that's how I became a legal so citizen. Then I changed it all time. It's wrong. Oh, how do you spell that's it? Like. like and uh, SU, just SU, not like TSU or something like that. I was thinking of like how you could make it sound huh. better, but that was probably a good call. Yeah. That was a good call on that one. Anyways. I mean, <laughs> well, so, yeah, obviously we got a lot to talk about today. There was a lot of news that broke out in the past month, as I said before. So, we'll, but first off, we're going to kind of talk about a little bit about the games that we're playing. So, obviously, Adam, uh, you got a chance to review Brandish, which is – a hugely popular game in Japan. I think it pretty much was a system seller for the PSP back when it got ported for the first time. And then finally, Exceed were kind enough to localize it after announcing that they were going to do that before. And so I know you got to play it. Darren, I know you guys you got to play a little bit more. Um, Adam, so what did you think about Brandish? I read a little bit of your review. You seem to really like um, yeah, so, some of the well, mechanics. Brandish is weird because I think it came out in Japan in like 2009. So like, yeah, the remake, well, not, yeah, not the original before. Brandish. That what? No, no, not like yeah, the nineties. So yeah, like the original 94. Brandish came out in like ninety three or whatever, and that was on the Super Nintendo. Yeah. And that one actually was surprisingly localized and apparently kind of panned. Uh, it, yeah. Um. So this is the PSP remake that came out six years ago in Japan, and then just last year at E three, actually just kind of randomly announced, hey, we're going to be bringing bringing a PSP game over. You know, in 2014, and didn't actually release until 2015. So that 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 alone is just kind of weird. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> so it, it's kind of been their calling card for all the games lately for X. Right. It's like, I mean, so they just found the off. They took the off. It's from Falcom, which X Seed is. You know, they're the ones that are going to be porting Falcom games, or at least most of them. Um, and they just kind of saw the opportunity and they took it and they released it. Uh, I don't know how legitimate this is, but you know. Tom at XC kind of says it was kind of his side project for a while, and now that and just released it when he was finished with it. Um, but anyway, so yeah, it's a remake. Oh, that's funny. It's a remake of the first game, and I really didn't know too much what I was getting into. Like I was familiar with the E series, and I was familiar with you know the Trails series and the Kaseki series, but I wasn't like, what is Brandish? Um, it's like an action RPG, a simple action RPG slash dungeon crawler. Uh, so it's kind of a not a not a typical combination, but when I started playing it, 
you know, it's very, very, very intuitive. You kind of get the hang of things in minutes. You, it doesn't have a higher learning curve at all in terms of figuring out what you have to do. And that's that's something that Falcon games are, I think, generally pretty good at. It kind of reminded me of, like, a Yeast Origin. Um, you just pick it up and play. Uh, Darren, Darren, did you have, like, the same feeling in terms of how intuitive it was? or Definitely, because the whole gimmick of the game is rotating the camera around to change your perspective for puzzles and enemies. Because unlike a lot of dungeon crawlers, it's not one tile at a time. All of it's happening in somewhat real time, so that enemies move all the time, you're moving all the time, and a big part of that is to strategically move, swing around the camera while you're moving to get the advantage on your enemies. And at first, it's kind of like, okay, I can kind of see where this goes. And you get the hang of it really quickly. It was really good that way and perfect for portable play. I love so how you can save it. So when you're thinking rotating, do you mean like all along like Super Paper Mario? It's, that was disorienting when I first experienced that. It's that the world rotates. Well, in the like original, it's, it's as soon as you press the rotate button, it just immediately switches the view without a rotation or anything. So it was it was oh, really clunky. <laughs> Oh, so just... the, the Dark Revenant, which is the subtitle of the game, it does a really good job at uh, modernizing the original. Yeah, and what, what, and also, so what, what I'm getting at is, is that it was kind of very easy to kind of understand. This is how the game plays. You know, it doesn't take long at all to really get it or understand it. You know, most RPGs, or not most, but a lot of them, you kind of have to figure out how to play the game. But this one, you kind of just figure it out right away and also the general task that you're doing is also really easy you're just trying to go to the next floor so the the game is separated by floors and you basically have to basic find the stairs to the next floor and then to the next floor and so this sometimes involves like uh fi fighting monsters of course finding keys you know and also puzzles and the puzzles start out really simple like jumping over holes and then they get more and more complicated as you go but basically the entire game, that's kind of your task, is to solve the floor and get to the next floor. So when Darren said this is a great for a portable game, that's one reason why. It, it, you don't have to, like, you know, it's you're not, like, the, the story is pretty minimal, too. So there's not a whole lot to really, like, kind of keep, keep track of. You just, all right, solve this floor, go to the next floor, and it's, it's very simple to play. I found um, it very addictive to, do, to go one more floor. Right, right. And, like I'd be playing the game, and be like okay, I should shut this off soon. Then I'd get to the end of a floor and just kind of start exploring it, and kind of just lose myself in exploring that floor. It's like okay, okay, I'll do this floor, then I'll go to bed, or then yeah, I'll turn it off. So it's sort of like Persona Q, maybe in that respect. It is kind of like a Netrian Odyssey type game where you ma you're mapping out floors, and that's also an addicting element of it. Is you want to get 100 percent because you can get bonus items uh, when you do that. Um, so it does have that kind of mapping element that some dungeon crawlers have um but it's it doesn't have any like turn-based battles or anything like that and it's not a grid well it is a grid but it's not like moving one tile at a time well, i guess i guess it kind of is but it doesn't it doesn't feel just, like, the, just the characters but not the enemies yeah. i mean it is actually is moving one tile at a time on the on the grid it's not like turn-based it, though when you when you think of it, <laughs> it it's, it's a very no. fluid game uh, I mean, it is a PSP game, and it's obviously not meant to be like a visual showcase. But it's it's a very fluid game. It's 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 fast paced enough, not like a yeast or something like that. But um, it's it's just a. Is it is it just like because I was I, I did get to play some of it because I noticed that when you go into these dungeons, I mean, there's like the place where you buy items and all this other stuff. Do you ever? leave, like, the dungeon area and go back to town, or is it always constantly inside the dungeon? There is always no inside a dungeon. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. and it's... That's what I it's, think. I think what I put in my review is that it's, it, the game is extremely straightforward, and I don't mean that as a as a negative. It's just, it's... There are no twists and turns. There's nothing trying to trick you. It's... You know what you have to do, and then you just go do it. Um, in terms of, like, difficulty and challenge, uh, enemies... Basically, how combat works, and combat is not, you know, the focus, the focal point here. There's a reason why we haven't really talked about it yet. But enemies will kind of, they can move around freely, you know, not, they're not turned or anything like that, and they'll come up to you and they'll start attacking. You face them, so you rotate the camera to face them, um, and you'll automatically block their attacks, and you have to basically press the attack button, you know, when it's appropriate, at appropriate times. And that's, that's the, general idea 
But of course, it gets more complicated when you start to have more interconnected rooms and more t enemies roaming around, kind of trying to surround you, and also enemies that have ranged attacks and things like that. So you might have an enemy at your front and then enemies at your side, like shooting projectiles. Um, so it can get a little hectic, but it's again it's pretty simple to understand how to how to approach them and how to and how to vanquish them. Um, so go ahead. I was I was going to say like I. I remember playing some of like the Super Nintendo version back when it came out because we used to get all those games all the time. I just remember like like for example like the music there was barely any like variety to it. It was mostly just like the same like maybe four or five minute loop going around. So how was that? I'm I'm sure it's being a Falcon game. That was now, the good. music was but, the music was pretty good. I mean the the game is like four four main areas that you go through. Uh, you start in like a ruins, and then you go to a tower, and then you go to caves and whatnot. And each area basically has one background track, and that's so you're listening to the same background track for quite a while. Um, mm. But it is a good; it, the tracks are good, so it's not like you're. You should, yeah, you shared some music with yeah, me. It's pretty good. <laughs> so the, the tracks are good, so they're not they're not um, you know annoying you. But also, you can switch it between the new remastered soundtrack and the the old version as well. Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. Um, pretty... So you can and you can just do that in the menu. And they're actually some of the older tracks I actually like better than the newer ones. Um, but the music is pretty good. There's some. I think each boss fight has its own unique music, uh, and there's quite a bit of variety there. But yeah, it, it's Falcom Sound Team, so it's it's pretty solid. That's and great. I'm going to be quite honest. There really isn't much else to say about the game. That's how simple it is. We've kind of touched on everything. Um, it seems like it's a good laid-back game, right. like um, Dan was talking about. It doesn't seem like making it complicated is that bad, though, for the most. No, no, no it it like, works, it's really designed around its set mechanics, and it works really well within them. And it it does a lot of creative things in the level design and some of the enemies you fight. And it's always intriguing to keep going on because there's always something to spice up the formula. So it's simple but very refined. Now, I thought the game was a little bit too simple. For the main game, uh, even near the end, I felt like I wasn't really being challenged too much. But it also felt like that wasn't really the point of the game. It wasn't meant to be, you know, like a, a white knuckle, you know, tense. An East game. Tense <laughs> um, but there is a second mode. This is new to the PSP version. So, first of all, let me talk about the story, which you can basically put on a napkin. You are a some sort of knight or warrior. It doesn't, I think it's kind of vague, actually. And your name is Ares. you're a mercenary or something? Mercenaries? Okay. So your name is Ares, is your character's name. And you're being, you're being, you're being, uh, basically pursued by a bounty hunter witch, uh, named, uh, Dila. And she's the one in all the artwork that you may have seen. And. I mean, she's only wearing a metal bikini, so she well, kind of has but, to be. <laughs> to the and catch, why is she catch chasing you? you because of a bounty? And that's, that's basically all that matters. And at the beginning of the game, you fall into a crevice in the earth, and you find yourself in this ancient ruins in the middle, in the you know the depths of the earth, and you have to climb your way out. And that's that's the premise of the game, and that that's basically the whole story. Uh, but at the end of the game, you actually can play as Dila, the sorceress, um, and it works in the exact same way the gameplay. So at that point, you're very familiar with everything, of course. But they ratchet up the puzzles and the and the and the number of the enemy density and things like that. Basically, it's kind of like a hard mode. So that mode I actually liked a lot more um, in terms of like when you know when I was looking for something that was a little bit more challenging. Um, so it it kind of just takes everything from the main game. You know, all right, you're used to everything. You know what's going on. You know what you're doing. How about this? And it just kind of throws right at you, and it's it's pretty satisfying to go through it. And it's also the game is also not too long. I think I beat it in like both modes and under. 30 hours, so it's, you know, I guess stand, stand, oh. standard size, but so it doesn't overstay its welcome, which I think is actually a really good thing. Yeah, so, I mean, it's, I think, isn't, like, brandish just, like, 20 bucks or it's, something like yeah, that it's, on it's PlayStation? 20, that's it. Yeah, so perfect price, I mean, for a game like that, uh, I mean, it's a PSP right. game, just being able to be uh, played on the Vita. So that seems like a really good Is price point for something like that. Because I know a lot of the PSP games look sketchy, sort of. It's, I mean, on the Vita, well, I mean, Adam I, would know I more than it, me. I but played it's it on like, Vita, yeah. which I believe Vita will 
Uh, there's probably a couple of different oh, modes you can do it. I I think the, the I have it set to the standard default where it blows it up just a little bit to fit it on the screen, which I don't really care to be honest. So it, it's it's I mean it's a PSP game, so it doesn't look okay. And it and it's, it's, it's not the like, only thing preventing me pr- from playing War of the Lions right now. And it's really and, it, and it's 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 not going to be like Crisis Core or something <laughs> like that in terms of visual, uh, you know. I, I, can't, I can't play War of the Lions because that frame rate yeah. is just terrible, and I can't stand that at all. Like, I cannot believe people praise it so much. I'm like, are you serious? I love Final Fantasy Tactics is my favorite Final Fantasy like game, but man. Well, right, but I mean, I guess, it, I guess it goes to show we haven't talked about performance at all because the game is is rock solid. It, you know, it's steady frame rate. Yeah. No Loading times are, are pretty quick. Um, also, you can yeah. save anywhere. Um, oh God, yes, yeah, that's so, what I love that. Um, well, as a dungeon yeah. crawler, that's like excellent. It's like, God. Mm-hmm. yeah, yes. It's like Class of Heroes. When I was able to do that, I was pretty pumped, just because like that's a pet peeve when you're only like you die, you start at the beginning of oh, the trust, dungeon and you lose all your items. Don't want to lose like three hours of progress. We'll get to you. We'll get no. to you. I was mad. Speaks with topic. So moving right along, I mean. Another, <laughs> we were talking about the games that we played before, and one that popped up was Valkyria Chronicles, because, of course, the the re-release uh, came out on the PC last year. We, we talked about that a little bit on the on the on Game of the Year podcast, but uh, you can find some really good deals on that game now since it's been out. Like, we just saw, like, a deal for $8, and Darren, you said you picked it up to. at that I price. I was waiting for a sale because I knew it would happen inevitably, and I already have a PS3 copy, and as soon as I saw it for 8 bucks on a Green Man Gaming, I knew I had to. Yeah, not enough could be said about how rock-solid that entire port was, just being able to support all those resolutions and all the different uh, changes you could make to it. Yeah, yeah uh, I'm playing it on, I'm on, playing on the board keyboard. Game. It looks good. Yeah, and, it, and the thing about it yeah. is that it's not like even a modest system can get, can achieve pretty high resolutions or downsampled resolutions on that game. It it's pretty spectacular. Yeah, it, runs, uh, it, it looks really incredible. Well, yeah, uh, with high quality, you know, visuals and resolutions, and you don't need a you don't need a machine like a, a souped up machine to get them. I mean, obviously it helps, but it's it's, yeah. it's pretty uh, it's pretty it's pretty surprising. Yeah, I mean, I, I did a review for it on the site, and I was able to play it on my laptop, uh, uh, just like I would if it was, I mean, it ran just as well as it did on the PlayStation 3. My laptop's not, like, top of the line. It's more, like, for multimedia stuff. So that was a lot of fun being able to play that again. I mean, Darren, is it your first time playing no, that game? second time through. Good. <laughs> I mean, I, that's why I was defending just, it as a surprise so hard on the last podcast, because it, it's yeah. a game I love. It's probably... I think the best game Sega's come up with in quite some time. Right. Best series. Yeah. Best series. Best series. Best series. It's it's been pretty amazing just being able to like sit back and look at the reactions people are having with that I game. I think this over the shoulder tactical strategy RPG type, like it it tells you something when like there's this code name Steam game coming out on DS and actually yeah. 3DS, and that. That actually has a demo. I actually haven't played it. That came out not too long ago. But anyways, everyone makes the comparison. Oh, so it's like Valkyria, which, you know, to varying amounts. But I think that people are kind of using Valkyria as almost like, you know, it, not, I don't know if benchmark's the right word, but it's like the Standard, prime, what it, it kind of, how it works. It, it's, it's almost like its own subgenre, like a Valkyria-style SRPG. It, what I'm getting at is that when Valkyria came out, this was a new idea in terms of this type of gameplay you could achieve, this over-the-shoulder, kind of like third-person shooter mixed with turn-based, mixed with strategy, that nothing was really like, um, and or nothing at least achieved the same quality that Valkyria did. And, yeah. it, like, I, not only, what I'm getting at is, Valkyria has not only, like, got, you know, great visual styles and a good cast of characters and a pretty good story and, you know, satisfying... Uh, you know, strategic elements, but it was unique. Um, and it's hard to say many games are like it. That's... Absolutely. I mean, it's it's pretty incredible. And it's, you know, it's it's kind of sad to see how that series has been treated lately. I mean, I got a chance to go back and play Valkyria Chronicles 3 because like a year ago, I played through that game when they released that English patch. I was able to play, um, I bought 
it on the Japanese PlayStation Network when it was on sale for ten dollars. The uh, Buckier Chronicles Three. I forget. There's like a long name for it. I forget the, what it's called, but it was like the most recent release of it. Uh, the of the version of the game. It had like additional characters and missions and stuff like that. But I got to play that, and I, I you know fell in love with it again. And then compared to Valkyria Chronicles, obviously it's uh, it, there's like this debate that can be had. But just thinking that there's this amazing game, the third in the series, that no very few people outside of Japan have been able to or or are willing to you know play it. Uh, it's we're missing out a lot, and you hope that with this uh, with this re-release that they're willing to reconsider it, especially how well it did on Steam. I mean, being in number one or in the top ten for as long as it did, and beating out like games like Assassin's Creed and stuff like that. So, but it. Based on recent news, it sounds like Sega's kind of moving towards online games and mobile games and laid off a bunch of their staff, so it doesn't seem like well, it's going to be happening that Well, Sega's slowly supporting their localization efforts, I guess. What did they localize recently that was just like, oh, yeah, yeah. Dengeki Bunko, Fighting Kaima, uh, and they yeah, announced the Yakuza 5. <laughs> Literally, I was reading it's gonna be 30 bucks. the first like, five posts, of course, they're like, what the fuck? <laughs> that's, that's the most surprising news. I, I wonder though, is that if that news came like before or after they announced their change uh, yeah, in focus? I mean, it's yeah, it is. It you doesn't seem like it was that sudden. Changing, like they're sort of making the same efforts like Bamco is doing. They're like, shit, we're just gonna support a fuck ton of localizations. So fuck, why not? Well, the, <laughs> the Japanese game sales are not, or and system sales especially are terrible right now. So yeah, like, they yeah, need the they need us in the West this. to help support and, them. Yeah, to be fair, I mean, like really, like in the like, let's say in the uh, example of Dengeki, like, and not even that, but Hudson make it too, like, like localizations for those games, like, really, come on, like, are they really going to be that expensive to like localize a couple of lines? Not like Project Diva. It's been pretty much like changed. I mean, they finally in the in the newer version they put it out and actually translated the lyrics yeah, sure, for the first time when ever before. It was just like just the not the sound of the sure, Japanese. Sure, but I'm just saying like these localization efforts is not like localizing like Dragon Age Inquisition in the Japanese or something stupid. It's not. Expensive. No, it's not like a Legend of Heroes game, second <laughs> chapter. It's it's not quite that big. It's not of considerably taking. expensive. Shit, dude, the amount of dialogue you have to tra- translate in Dragon Age Inquisition, fuck, I would kill myself. But. <laughs> That's that's just pretty much Legend, Legend Heroes. Like Legend Heroes, more. the the script in those games, it's way bigger than Dragon Age. Bigger Ages. than the Lord of the Rings trilogy book about. set. Yeah, I mean the the game. I mean, not all of it is just script. It's a lot of like explanation, like just the those are just like the um, I forget what the what they're called, but it's it's like they're they're it includes more than just the dialogue and the writing. It includes like explanations and context and stuff like that. So it's not like the whole book that they showed in that picture. When they line them up I mean, together, it doesn't mean I all, can just all that stuff is being translated. Being like, fuck. I mean, whenever like a next best seller comes out, like Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings, I well, can just, just imagine like, them going, "Obviously, oh, the fuck in my life, I need to translate that." There's like, God damn it. Yeah, there's like nuances and words that don't exist in other languages and things like that. That's always, you know, obviously some companies have gotten into a lot of hot water I'm because like, of that. God, but God it's, damn it's stupid British. Yeah. There you go. That's, oh yeah, it's, it's the it's the uh, Queen's English is the problem here. It's not British like... people confirmed <laughs> for being bad translators. Shots fired. Harry Potter and the Philosopher's uh, Stone. Yeah. So then, yeah, I mean, Valkyria Chronicles. Of course, it's great to see that and all the excitement that that brings. But uh, man, I just love that series so much, and it's so heartbreaking just to see. I mean. Uh, Savaria, Savaria is actually in the Geki Bunko. So it's like, come on. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> we need to. Maybe, I mean, but maybe, to be fair, maybe, like, Cosmos maybe, uh, is maybe in. Maybe she's like, going to be uh, relegated to Cosmos tier, just going to be appearing in crossovers that's... for the rest of her life. <laughs> as soon as I said that, I thought of Cosmos, and that's exactly what I was just like. <laughs> Overrated waifu. All burn. Uh, no. I just hate that word. But anyway. That word. So, <laughs> like, god damn, this thing is <laughs> I just, everyone who says it in my timeline, I just get sick and tired of hearing that. But anyway, uh, another game that apparently you guys are playing was some Kingdom Hearts. Uh, the 2.5, I imagine, was the one you guys yeah, were playing, yeah, right? Yeah, I mm-hmm. love it. So, which um, which one did you guys actually put some time into? I, you actually, I like, actually put a lot of time into both Kingdom Hearts 2 and Birth by Sleep. So, <laughs> it, 
How, how does Birth by Sleep look? Because I only I reviewed the PSP version. I never I've yet to play the actual like the PS3 yeah. remaster. I mean, so first of all, the remaster looks great. I mean, it's still a PS2 game at heart, so. It's like the faces in the black boxes. That's all I can think of. Is like the, oh, the yeah, mouth. The, Listen, the, you only need three words to describe Kingdom Hearts visually. It's fan fucking fantastic. Yes, but I mean, so like Birth by Sleep looks great, but you know, it was a PSP game, and you can kind of tell like when you're playing, like, oh, look at this big empty area with kind of blockish. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's Kingdom Hearts in general, I guess. Yeah, I mean, that was like Kingdom PSP. Yeah, that's Kingdom Hearts. Like PCs everywhere. Yeah, but even the environments are very simple, and you know, the maps are very simple, and. So, I mean, obviously they weren't going to change anything, and that's fine, but um, so, it, but otherwise, like, the character models uh, and all that, they look really great. Um, and the art style, I think, helps, too. Uh, it, it wasn't going for, like, a realistic style back in the day, so it, it aged as well. Um, uh, yeah, the, the, problem, the biggest problems I had with the PSP version was, like, the, the camera. And, and you might remember in the, in the PSP version, yeah. uh, you had to, like, there's optional toggles to like get the better color and the better loading or whatever it was. Right. Um, better loading. I mean, oh, you yeah. can install it, to the uh, it, PSP. It, you don't have to worry about yeah. that now. But anyways, so I guess I'll just start at the top. Sure. Um, Kingdom Hearts Two, when it first came out, I wasn't a big fan of it because Shh, it, Kingdom Hearts Two it, is it was great. Definitely <laughs> a lot smoother than the original Kingdom Hearts game. It was also um, very fun to match. The story um, was better. Not even talking about story, but I felt that it was very, very, very simple and actually kind of thoughtless. Whereas you almost approached every battle in the same way. You just had to find an opening and then press X a bunch and watch Sora do amazing 20 hit combos. Um, well, the combat sucks in those games, so I don't know. It's, right. it's, I'm not but, too. So I, I, I just wasn't a big fan of it. Um, but Final Mix. Editions, which we never got, I was have heard a lot of good things about them in terms of like it had a harder difficulty mode and you know more bosses and things like that. So playing through it, I was kind of hoping my opinion of it would change, which it did slightly. Um, some of the newer bosses that are like post game bosses have some neat like gimmicks to them that are kind of fun. Not but, only that, but like the organization fights in general. That's like, what I, that's what I mean. Uh, you had, like, you have to understand, like, kind of good boss pattern, you know, strategies, like, understanding the pattern, know how to counter, and, you know, things Marluxia like that. Marluxia in particular, too. Like, Marluxia yeah, Marluxia was... Yeah, is a really good. Fight. Yeah, that's, like, one of the probably best design bosses, like, in Square Enix history. Just yeah. Like. Um, and these are the type of bosses that, like, even if you're level 99, uh, you're not going to win if you don't know what you're doing. Um, so I thought that was really cool, how it, like, really emphasizes strategy. So some of my two simple complaints from the original game were mitigated by these bosses. But I, one thing I wasn't really still a fan of was, like, um, it's kind of... Well, the game is kind of, I think, too flashy for its own good. You have, to, you have to wail on people a lot to do damage, so you're pressing X a lot. And like I said, the combo... Well, I, mean, I, think, I think that's a disparity between... Because the finishers do quite a bit of damage, but the regular yeah. attacks that lead up to the finisher just don't do that much damage. That's yeah, like, but that's, but it's sometimes, especially later in the game, when you have like all these boosts on, it takes a long time to get to the finishers, and you can, you can shorten it, though. Um, but playing Birth by Sleep, it's I, I felt like it was a little bit more deliberate in the battles, where your your maximum combo, I think, is like in terms of a regular hit combo, is like six hits or something like that. Yeah. Um, and, I, and so each hit does a little bit more damage. Um, and I just felt that was a little bit... I preferred that rather than like it's, just... It's, it's tuned better. It's tuned better. Um, it's overall a better battle system in general right. just thanks to the style system. I don't... Yeah. It, and also, do you really think it's better? Like, because I actually I, think, like, they're two different completely. This why I think, like, similarly, they're very different games. I think Birth by Sleep is... I, 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 when I say better, I mean I prefer it. I'm not trying to speak, okay, you know... Yeah. It's not objectively, because 2 is, like, one of my favorite games ever. I, yeah, I could... I'll put 2 over yeah. Birth by Sleep I, any day, I, but I really like the, the Command PSP deck. version. Command Thank Deck... You. Is, an, is another level of player agency that I have. I can choose and mold my own arsenal of attacks and have my own coordination of, all right, so these are going to be the attacks I use. These are going to be the ways that I, you know... It gives you an I, actual I build of skills. Like, 
It gives you well, a build. Like, do you want to go for a trap build? Do you want to go for a cast? Like, like gives you various ways to actually tackle them in counters. Yeah, well, sort of. I mean, it's not like you have that much variety. But I think you have I, that much variety. I just think the enemies suck. That's about it. <laughs> but anyways, um, I do like having that control, whereas in Kingdom Hearts 2, you get these new abilities that are mostly just addition add additions to your combo or modifications to your combo, and that was kind of it. Um, where I, I like having, you know, these different abilities that you pick and choose and swap out and meld. Um, so that alone is what is why I like Birth by Sleep the most. Um, and also, on the PS3, I know Zach mentioned the camera control. The camera control is almost perfect. It's really, really good. It's, it's pretty typical. You're right, you That's use the right good. stick to control things with the camera rather than the clamshell, you know, with the R and L buttons. On the, on the PSP. Well, yeah, the, using single end lock stick, it was just a poor... The PSP was right. not that well designed. There, <laughs> don't, there's, there's a couple of places where the camera isn't so good, but otherwise I think it works really, really, really great. Um, and it's good. Like, good. Having the three different characters with slightly different, you know, styles and strengths, I think that... I, I prefer that as well. Um, also, certain commands are locked out, too. Not locked out, but like... Are exclusive well, yeah. to certain characters. Right. As well. I think I think going forward, Kingdom Hearts three is probably going to have that multiple character element. Be it Birth by Sleep had it, Dream Drop Distance had it, uh, you know, Kingdom Hearts two even had it with the different drive forms. So I wouldn't be surprised if they do if they if they use what they learn from Birth by Sleep, sort of fuse it with uh, Kingdom I, Hearts. 3. I don't think we'll see many Dream Drop. I don't think we'll see bleeding in a lot of Dream Drop Distance elements. But I think we'll definitely see a lot of bleeding in of Kingdom Hearts 2 elements and Birth by Sleep, sleep elements. So we'll probably get something along the lines of three, three the three characters, maybe probably Kairi, Sora, and Riku. And yeah. Do you think they're going to play, like, through the people? Yeah, yeah, I think, I think that's a good like that that. That'd be pretty cool. I mean, I wouldn't I'd, be, I'd be surprised if they did. That. And this is, like, coming from sort of a wish list thing. Like, they already showed off the key gun blade I, from yeah. Sora, like, I think that's a neat alternative weapon. Was, like Riku couldn't have like a key, key great sword or whatever. I don't like you know what I mean. Like just like a unique very things up weapon for each character. Well, do you do you think they're really going to go back to the well, or are they going to introduce new characters? Because I feel like they the well. keep recycling the same stuff. It's it like how how invested are you in these characters if for the third time you're going to have to go back and do it? It's I also think more than the third mm-hmm. time. Like, right. like what I saw. Oh, like, despite how okay, crappy yeah. well, Dream Drop Distance was overall, like, as a Kingdom Hearts game, maybe whatever, whatnot, but, like, that CG intro of Dream Drop Distance is a great intro, just because it's a callback to, like, literally the entire Kingdom Hearts legacy of, like, all the characters that you're really invested in. Well, the thing I, is, like, I, I think in terms of new characters, the one that is probably going to be, like, the ones that are probably going to be new, quote, in terms of playable characters are characters like Kyrie, who's never been playable, and maybe Leah slash Axel. You know, like the, these characters are characters that people know but have never been playable, and they're, you know, the good guys. Um, so I don't know if we'll get, like, brand new, new characters, but. We'll get brand new villains, but. Right. Oh, did they did they say when Kingdom Hearts three is set? Like, is it a sequel well, to yes, the whole yeah. thing right yeah, now? Yeah, it literally it's the only direction it can, it's so, the only direction they can possibly go. So, Dream Drop Distance. I, Zach, oh, I don't that's know if you're right. familiar with Dream Drop Distance. First of all, well, it's first the of all, link, Dream Drop isn't it? Yeah. Story is kind of uh, pardon <laughs> that shit, but uh, if, if, <laughs> if, people just... Kingdom, if people thought Kingdom Hearts two made things convoluted, Dream Drop Distance just like pushes Magnus back. Into them. <laughs> Birth by Sleep was a little bit no, 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 no. Birth by Sleep was relatively grounded compared to everything else. Yeah, it, 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 it made the bullshitting in Kingdom to make sense, like, for the most part. Well, well anyways, Dream Drop Distance is, the, is right basically time. the setup to 3, and it's really crazy and wacky. And there's... Discover the chain of memories. So, huh. we, <laughs> it's... It makes they've sense already, that they've, they've been seen. talking about the HD version just because people need to have played Dream Drop Distance, and by now it seems like I, I how are you going to make people to understand? We'll definitely see up? a collection of 1.5 and 2.5 for the PS4 and Xbox One before Kingdom Hearts 3 Like, you can, After like, Final you can Fantasy 10 and 10 too, I'm not surprised. Like, when when, when 1.5 yeah. was on, on the board, you should have been able to guess that right away. If you haven't guessed it, you're dumb. I'm just saying it. If you're listening to this... It's... it's 
yeah, it's the thing where it's like, you know, I feel less and less interested in buying games for my PlayStation 3 and way more into, like, put it on the PS4. Like, when it comes to people, like, the ports and stuff like that, it's like, I am not that upset just because it's like, yeah, I, I want to slowly pack away my PS PlayStation 3 after a while. Because I've played all the, I most of the games I've played. I do want to go back to play on the main. This, like, Kingdom Hearts 2, and I guess sort of confirmed by C, they look freaking fantastic. It makes me really think, like, how hard, re- how really, really hard Square Enix Square Enix pushed that PS2 technology back in the day. Like, it looks amazing. Like, it literally is just an upscaled game. The place, yeah, like, Kingdom Hearts 2, like, especially shit. towards the end of that game, that looked amazing. That was, like, the music and just all the visuals and the CG. They could use that same visual. They could have literally used the Kingdom Hearts 2 engine to have made Kingdom Hearts 3, and I would have been totally fine with it. It was on DVDs. Like, just like, think about how much they had to pack into a like, DVD. Like, am I crazy? <laughs> like, well, well, what's kind of, what's kind of, I mean this in a good way, what's kind of ridiculous about it is, like, the character models are not super, like, detailed, but, but they, look, they, they look amazing because it fits with style. the art style. It's kind of that cartoony style, which, of course, fits with the Disney uh, elements of it. And it just, it works really well. Um, and there's really rare, jag- there's like rarely jagged textures, like, if any. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's like Valkyria Chronicles. That game, seven years later, still looks great because the engine. <laughs> I, just, I don't that, know, man. That ran on it. So, so speaking, yeah, let's, let's, let's move on. Speaking of so, other uh, PS3 <laughs> games that should have maybe been on what? other consoles. <laughs> Oh, I want to talk uh, about we'll another game first. We'll, we'll, we'll get to it. We'll get to this area, but let's talk about... I want to talk about Atelier because I want to bring Liz in since uh, she's been hanging out in the background. <laughs> I want to talk to you. So you said you played a little bit of the tutorial. Atelier Tutori, which is... Isn't that the... I keep messing it up. Is that the second it, or the third It's the second one named? in the Ireland. It's the second. Maruru yeah. is the What's third What's the one, first yeah. one? Rorona. Rorona. So it's Rona. It's it's Rona. Tatori. Miruru is its own subset, and then you got uh, Aisha, Eskenlaji, and then Shali is the third. Okay. Is, is the second subset, which is like. I, I, and basically, all those games are on PlayStation, on PlayStation so. Three, and I guess five of them now are on. Or no, four of them are on PlayStation Vita. Rorona never went to Vita. Right? It did, yeah. No, it didn't. I, play, I reviewed it. Yeah. Plus, Plus was all on Vita and okay. PlayStation 3. It's, it's, uh, all of them except for Shally are now on the Vita because the Eskin Laji Plus Japan, came out like, yeah. a, like a week or two ago on, in Japan. So, and I can't wait to play that game. Hopefully when it gets localized. And so, like, Liz, have you, like, been into the Atelier series Oh, yeah, series I really like the Atelier series. I'm just really behind on the entries because I tried to comp- like, I tried to platinum Verona a while ago, and it, it uh, kind of oh. burned me out. <laughs> that, that yeah, so I gave up on that and started moving on to uh, Tutori, which I, I feel is already, like, a lot better than Verona in terms of the gameplay elements, and I'm really excited to see um, how, how much better the series gets as it goes along. Yeah, like, I... The, that's the thing is that I kind of mentioned it in my review for Aisha Plus. It's like I stayed away from that series for the longest time, not because I felt any sort of like uh, adversity towards it or anything. It was just like the idea of jumping into a game crafting. that's all about yeah. synthesizing and crafting. Yeah, that it's 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 kind of like uh, the thing I don't like the most, at least up until that point. All having that based around the game, it didn't seem like that kind of thing. But it sounds like you at least played those games. I mean, like, the, um, all the other, like, the PlayStation 2 versions and stuff like that, they seem to they were be more about it. They but were I guess a lot more like these regular RPGs. Like, the Atelier Eris games, they were, they were made specifically yeah. to try to drive in people that liked RPGs more than synthesizing, and then they tried to bring it back to, like, synthesizing, or, like, normal synthesizing with Atelier Annie for the DS, and it was really not very good. Wasn't wasn't Iris like the the one set in a school? Oh uh, no, that's like that? Mana that like Chemia or Chemia. Yeah. Oh, Mana Chemia. That like oh, that's too. right. That that <laughs> one was that one was kind of more like Iris than it was the other the PS3 games too. That one was pretty fun, but the Iris ones were kind of weird overall. 
that's I like I used to own like Atelier Iris two and I never played it. <laughs> I bought it, I never played it. <laughs> that's that's how weird it was at one point. It's because I got it super cheap, but yeah, it's uh, I've yet to I own like Atelier Tutori. I almost I think I own like all the games now except for Shally at this point, just because of you know reviewing the games and stuff like that. But yeah. Um, I mean, I've not played a tutorial, but I've covered Rona Plus, and it seems like Rona Plus took after all the adjust the the changes made in uh, Aisha and Eskenlogy. And so, have you seen anything about um, that game yet, though? I haven't like, actually played any of the plus versions, but I do know that they made a lot of a lot of changes to like the the UI and stuff to make it less cumbersome because the original Rona was extremely cumbersome and trying to figure out what you could synthesize and and just, like, fighting battles and all sorts of things. It was really hard to even tell whose ending you were going to get because it wouldn't it wouldn't even give you, like, many indications of anything. So I know they made a lot of changes to make that more accessible, which is really good because, like, otherwise it's, like, very tedious to get anything without a guide in that game. Oh, so you're playing the actual, like, the PlayStation 3 yeah, version of the Yeah, I'm playing the PlayStation 3 versions of oh. all of them. Oh, okay. Because yeah, that's the thing I heard about those games is like when you were um, like synthesizing something, there there was a, a risk that you would fail it, the recipe, and then it would just destroy everything you had oh, yeah. in that recipe. So that I think that I think that might have also I think that's also some if I'm not mistaken I think it's an Eskenology as well because I think I remember like destroying some stuff and it was like the worst mm-hmm. feeling like all these very high rare items all of a sudden just being completely ruined and burning up in your pot and you're like okay I'm going to reload I can't I can't even function I can't even stand this I can't ha- let it happen so uh yeah so um I got to uh cover Atelier uh, Atelier Aisha Plus and then yeah so you were talking about how the how some of the earlier games are frustrating I that, and that kind of brings it to Atelier Aisha because uh, when that game first came out um, in America, uh, I forget how long ago it was because now I'm blanking. I think it was it was just like a couple years ago. The problems that it had were a few in number. Like there was no, for one thing, there was no dual audio, and that was huge. Uh, just because leading up until the game's release, Koei uh, Tecmo was saying and promoting on their Twitter account that the game would have dual audio, Japanese and English. And then, like, at the very last moment, I think they were notified by their Japanese counterpart that it wasn't happening. And they're like, well, guys, hate to break the news. And this was right after they had taken, they had bought out Gust and basically are the ones in charge of that. I think, I think Miss America, uh, uh, NIS America was still doing some of the, you know, the translation work and stuff like that for them, but it was obviously that made everyone pretty upset. And if I'm not mistaken, wasn't was it Tutori? Was it? I forget which one it was. One of the plus versions that uh, suddenly got released on oh, yeah, it PlayStation was, Network. Yeah, it was definitely Tutori. Like it just released one day, and everyone was like, "Oh, hey, that game we wanted, we didn't know about it." <laughs> Yeah, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think that was at E3, but then it just kind of went to hiding and then suddenly yeah. came out. So that's already, and, and that happened the same year, if I'm not mistaken, as when uh, Aisha came out. So it was already people were in a really sour mood with Koei, just how they were treating that series, just because obviously it's got a pretty rabid fan base. Um, and you don't really realize it until, like, I was looking around doing research about the games, and I understood, like, there are a lot of people who really love those games um, and are totally into it, like, just the sheer amount of, like, fan art and fiction, all the stuff that surrounds that series. People are really into it, especially, I mean, in Japan, it's huge. But, because, I mean, this, this, this is a series that's been going around for, like, 15, 20 years now, and so it, it makes sense. Like, uh, a series can't last that long unless it's got a fan base to support it. But, um, so it's got, yeah, it's got dual audio, which is great because the problem with, because so, a lot of people like to say, like, well, I just like to play it in English, and that's from it. What I, like, from what I could tell, the yeah, English, um, the English localizations are basically bare bones, like, they just voice, like, the cutscenes, and that's it. 
that's the problem with like the dubbing in general when it comes to Japanese RPGs. Because like Nino Kuni, when that came out, like very few of the scenes were voiced, uh, and even like some of the more important ones, you like expect that to happen, didn't happen. In the Japanese version of Atelier Aisha Plus, it's like almost every single scene in that game is voiced. Even the ones that you think would be pointless, it, it, they're voiced, and it, it says a lot. Just because if we're going to have a game in this modern era where there's voice acting now, like back then in the '90s and stuff like that, it's like, well, whatever. I I didn't care much either way because I could think about the voices of those characters, and then I realized later that they usually ruined them when they added them uh, when they released like remakes and stuff like that. But here, it's 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 um. The voice acting in Atelier Aisha Plus is is pretty good. Um, I think Escalaji also had some good voice acting, although the problem with I think uh, Eska in that game, uh, every time there was a successful um, synthesis, uh, she would just cry out every single time, like every single voice. You just it got on your nerves really poorly. But uh, the voices here were pretty pretty good. Um, and all the same characters that I liked in the, in the sequel were, were back, and so I think that's, that it speaks a lot, and I think that was one of the things I, I enjoyed most, and that's the importance of dual audio, just because um, that they get, the Japanese voice actors, they get paid so much money to voice all these scenes, and when people say, like, if a game comes over and it just has Japanese acting, it's like, well... It's it's more than just being authentic. It's that it's it's cheaper, but it ends up coming out like a lot better just because you don't have to sit through long cutscenes of just seeing someone's mouth move and then just reading some text. So it's it's you know um, it says a lot. But uh, yeah, some of the other changes. It's got all the uh, DLC that came over from the PlayStation 3 version. It's got, like, additions. Like, they give you the opportunity to switch your characters at any time, which is not in Satori or Rona, uh, if wait, I'm not wait, mistaken. Wait, 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 right? what do you mean? Like, you just can't normally switch them? You... No, you have to run up to them in town or something and ask yeah. to recruit them. Yeah, so you don't, like, get a pool of people you can... You have to unlock it, though. So, uh, but... Yeah, it's, uh, going back, I actually, I am gonna start playing Tutori soon just cause I've already, you know, beaten the other ones and I wanna, that's the great thing is that now that the plus versions are out, you can play Verona, Tutori, Maruru, uh, Aisha plus, oh. and then soon, hopefully, Eskenlaji plus, all on the Vita. Which is, you know, if you want to start off playing the series, it's, it's a great yeah, time to do that. You have to have a really but, big um, memory card for it. That's, that's what you kind of hope, and it's like, because the Vita's not doing so well, it's like, Sony, just have the price of your memory cards at the very least. And it's like, what is stopping them besides the, the, the dollar signs in their eyes? Because it's like, that's what's holding back your system, is the cost of memory. I I would think that because they release games so frequently nowadays for the Vita, uh, it's like, just drop the price on it. Yeah, because RPG is like... Like, um... A Taylor Aisha Plus, so the game is about three or four gigs, and then if you want to have the option of, um, you, I don't know if that's in Tutori where like you can run up to a book inside the shop where you can like change the music. Is um, that in that one? Not too? that I know of. Oh, I think that might be just in the Plus versions then. But yeah, it's, I, I showed in the video that I made for the site that you could, in Rowan Plus, you can uh, go into a book and then change the music, any of the music in the game, to something else uh, from the entire like catalog of Gust, um, and here it's like you have to pay a little bit of a fee uh, for the DLC, but it's like one and a half gigs, and so you're talking about a four gig game, and then one and a half gigs for just the, the extra sound if you want to enjoy that. Yeah, and then like a, a 32 gigabyte memory card costs like $70, and so it's like, how are you supposed to enjoy these games on a system where like the PSP was like the best part of the PSP was all the RPGs? It's, Sometimes it sucks being a big fan of this <laughs> genre, <laughs> just because you get shortchanged sometimes. But yeah, that, that's, that was a, series, that's a great um, series. I'm, I mean, just yeah. I, I'm going to be sincere. It's not doesn't seem like it's exactly my cup of tea in terms of like, like I'm questionable that if I were to actually, I have never played one. Um, I mean, I, I just by covering I, them and I watched you play a, a, a bit that one time, uh, I kind of think I'm familiar enough with them. I just kind of need to go out and try them, but since I'm so hesitant. 
Like, that's that's I, exactly how I felt. I, I think I just need to make yeah. the plunge at some point, but there's, you know, it's, it's kind of like on my list, but it's not at the top. <laughs> so I don't know, man. Girls that kawaii kind of scare me. <laughs> <laughs> the, I think the difference here is that it's not so much about, like, it's, actually, it's not at all like fan The things that I'm more interested like in, which Zach, about. if you touched on in his review, it's not, uh, yeah, the art style is kind of like cute girls doing cute things, such as that, uh, whatever. Um, but the... You know, a lot of JRPGs, you know, fall into the same trap of, like, you know, the general structure of small beginnings, getting, you know, a small mystery, and you end up getting wrapped up into, like, a worldwide conflict or whatever, where the Atelier yeah. series, you know, it's more, the structure is different, you're, like, I know when you were showing me Ragona, you, you unlock, like, more and more places for things, but it's all, like, centralized in, like, a town, or, you know, in, like, in some sort of area scape. Um, and it's not like a worldwide conflict that you're dealing with. It's not an epic scale. It's just no. kind of like small town, you know, problems and things like that. Um, and the focus on crafting. So it's more of these like slight structure differences that I'm more interested in um, than, I guess, the cute girls doing cute yeah. things aspect it, of it. it. It's it's definitely not that type of series. And I will say one thing: it's not about so much like playing off the girls the aspect it's it's more about female empowerment is more like it just because it's like they're taking female characters and making them like the, the lead of a story and it's it's about taking a girl who's like just this this girl who who's taken over the, the apothecary shop from her grandfather who died and then has to go out and find her sister it's all about her just like normally being this very shy like uh, kind of a social outcast, not not intentionally so, but just kind of hiding away. No one really knows this girl who so, who makes all the medicine that everyone else buys. It's and then she goes out and becomes strong uh, in character. And they got like, and this is kind of what I mentioned before when I did Eskin Lodge is that there's a character Linka who's a very strong character. She's stronger than most of the males in that game. Like you can recruit guys oh, yeah. too. It's, well, it's not I like guess... it's all just girls, but like they're. It's it's fantastic to see that, but yes, the game is very structured around it's it's kind of low in it's, scope, it but feels it's, like, it's relaxing. It kind of feels like the like, RPG equivalent of like a slice of life type show, rather than you know the action, rather than the actiony kind of. like you know blockbuster type. I guess. <laughs> so it's, it's, I mean, I would I would say it, it kind of. Um, I mean, uh, of course, I've watched enough slice of life of anime where it's like it can get pretty emotional too but so that i guess in that sense yeah uh it's kind of like that it's it's not so uh action packed i will say there are moments in the series where that definitely is the case where there is like this larger conflict going on that you get engaged in as well but i would say yeah um and liz knows this as well i'm sure that it's it's not really about that it's more just uh day to day usually it's it's about managing your time but it's it's if you're into kind of the more tedious stuff where it's uh and and the, and the positive kind of tedium where it's like you're micromanaging things and getting into crafting like seeing something that you've made and it's a powerful item and you want to just play around these different types of um status effects and um all these uh, uh, other things that can come from creating a great product in the when you're synthesizing it's it's great just like spending t a long time just making all these items and just like seeing how Almost incredible like they are, just how uh, powerful they. Are. Well, not really yeah. that game, I guess. And <laughs> I, I, Liz, I assume Liz, that's kind of your draw to the series as well as the yeah, alchemy. Yeah, um, the or... alchemy, and I, what I really like about it is the fact that it, it's not a big scale. Like you're not trying to save the world; you're just trying to live through this character like they're they're trying to set their goals and that's it they're not trying to save the country they're not trying to do this or that like in Rorona all you're trying to do is try to is uh save the alchemy shop in Totori you're trying to find her mother and that's all it is it, it's nothing more than that usually and and it's yeah. fun to like watch the main characters grow and to and to uh see the other characters and how they interact with with the main character and, you know, learn about them as well. And it's very interesting in kind of a different way. Yeah. yeah. I, I should the same it, way. I should a, find your sister, Eskenazi. It's like to have found again. its, it's uh, niche in terms of, like, its style and, you know, because... Oh, well, it's, it's, it's always been, like, pretty much. I mean, even with the other I, games, I, it's I'm like be, I, Gus is... Basically, made the series. Artinolico is is right. more like their their version of like the big overarching like big conflict going that's on. Some, that's that's, that's kind of what they put that series. Or not, 
uh, not standardized, yeah. but like the more typical right style. Well, the the problem is like a lot of that stuff in some other games feels forced when they're trying to create that conflict that normally you like just a young boy who goes out and suddenly he was the chosen one to fight. It's it's so old school and traditional and people get sick and tired of it sometimes. Really? But uh, in this really? game, it doesn't seem like that so much. Really get tired of it. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> I, I I think it's it's the problem is that if it's not done well, it just comes I mean, across as very tropes, like. I mean, that does it well, then. well, tropes exist and they're always going to exist. You just kind of have to deal work with them well. So. Yeah, I think I think it uh, till it strikes a a, a a chord against uh, like trying to create its own yes, thing. But on. yeah, let's yeah, let's go ahead and move on into a, a topic that Simon was able to experience that. Tales of Hysteria came out in Japan uh, once again just like a couple weeks ago. I think it was the same day as the Escalogy Plus, so uh, big month for RPGs. But I heard you've had some weird experiences yeah. with that game, and I think that all the one-star reviews fuck on reviews, Amazon kind of speak volumes about it, too. But, but not our reviews. Don't fuck our reviews. Um, yeah, so, well, I guess <laughs> just to, like, segue nicely, speaking of, like, just RPGs, like, starting off, like, you know, uh, you know, like an MC becoming not starting from nothing to going to be a hero. That's pretty much like how the series sort of starts off. You have Sori. Is it Sori or Sori? I don't think we know. <laughs> okay, whatever. I have Sori. Okay, let's just say Sori. Sori is the MC, and he's literally um, no, he's, like no, a nobody. I, I've, I've been sort of paying attention to like the pre-release info, but not really. But he's like, he's like a monk in training. Like he works at well, like. Well, he's actually not. The thing is, like, oh. so he lives in in smack middle of nowhere, pretty much, um, in a forest of like where seraphim live, which are uh, just spiritual beings, like yeah. spirits that live there. And most humans can't see seraphim at all. But Sori is an exception. For some reason, he can see spiritual beings. Uh, possibly because he was raised with them. So he can see them, but uh, no one else can. And there was a random human that he sort of meets in uh, uh, in the area that he sort of resides. Um, her name is Alicia, and Alicia can't see uh, Seraphim at all. So she thinks he's crazy. But um, eventually, you know, plot moves along, and eventually Sori sort of goes out to the world and explores. And the thing is, like, you sort of get the idea that Sori is meant for bigger things, and it sort of helps because he's very self-confident. Um, I guess sort of to his uh, sort of the game's title, uh, Zesty. Um, his uh, character is very refreshing. It's enthusiastic, but he and he's naive too. But it doesn't come off in the wrong way. It doesn't rub you as like, oh, this guy's a complete idiot. Okay, like good. I, I, yeah, I was, say, I was about to say that. Like, I don't want another Asbel. Yeah, <laughs> which is good. And the thing is, like, I mean, kind of, it kind of sounds, I mean, kind of sounds like Lloydish. I mean, Lloyd's thing was not more enthusiasm; it was more uh, uh, let's get shit done, idealism. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Sori, Sori, the thing is, Sori has a, a bit of idealism too, but he's also very realistic. He's very grounded. Yeah. So it's actually very nice to see a naive person who's very grounded in reality and some of the things he can do and he can't do, and he also has a very good idea of what he wants and what he doesn't want. You, you get that fleshed out really early, uh, because um, you spend very little time of characterization um, in the beginning, um, but that's not to say you don't see any characterization at all. It's, it's, now, it's, just, done very, it's just done very quickly, and it's done very uh, simplistic. Uh, now, in terms of the game style, I know, like, ob- obviously there's the there's the sneer, you know, you, all Tales games play the same or whatever, which is definitely not... That true, but yeah. Zestiria's big thing that there was like the new thing is there's no there's no longer like a transition to like you know a separate battle arena. It's now like you just fight battles with like a real time transition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So pretty much when you run into an enemy, Sori will jump back, and then all the other enemies from that, right. from that one enemy you popped will appear, and then the party will appear from the back. So it's a really nice smooth transition. And the thing that most people work well. well Probably won't appreciate is that there are there's a very good blend of cu- cutscenes literally right into a battle like there's no transition like you'll be in a cutscene and then you'll be battling like right away. Not only oh, that, but like that's, awesome. also, that's like also that. applies for just overworld. Like you'll run into it and then you'll just start into a cutscene. No, so, no so black screen or anything. So rather, just 
There's so rather than issues. what rather than what Tails normally does, where you know some big bad says some scary thing, it zooms in on their face, and then you know it does like the flash or whatever. No, it's <laughs> not yeah. And then you're in battle. The, the the spinning vortex vortex that is the screen just goes out, and then it's like, really nice because like I mean it's my new things like most people aren't gonna care, but it makes that idea of like the seamlessness really stand out. Is, is a lot of it still like mocap like Zillia was? Yes, a lot of it's mocap, and the animation still seems stiff for the most part. Yeah, I will say great, that the cutscene direction has sort of taken a hit because of like that seamless transition. Uh, so there's a lot less camera camera directing going on, but you know... Well, yeah. In, in like Zillia and some of the other games, it was kind of obvious. Like, oh, this scene is a mocap scene. This scene is obviously not. I think yeah. Dawn of the New World is probably the biggest offender of that. That's like the first right. time they used it. Right, Dawn of the New World. You're going to go to a lot of mocap, so yeah. You're going to go to a lot of places, and I, I really do enjoy the game for for the most part. I do want to touch on the story in the sense that like it is good. Like it's not bad. Um, I guess to put it bluntly, it's literally someone becoming Jesus and going out to do Jesus things. That's what it. No, that's what it seemed like from the uh, trailers and the uh, from from the trailers and from the the media. Like the, the the Seraphim people. Is that their official name, Seraphim? I think I think they're called Seraphim. That's, and then, oh, and then uh, what's it called? Well, there's like a, a different story elements. Is called, story is not a monk. It, it's called a monk. What well, they call him Doshi in uh, Japanese. But the English translation is Shepherd, so they're probably going to call him Shepherd Story, which is weird, but whatever. But like most people, like maybe Jude or um, Asbel, they would be like, "Oh no, I have the world's task upon me," and all this other shit. It's not like that, which is real nice. Story's like, "Fuck, I am Jesus, and I will wreck you. Don't mess with me." So it's nice. Yeah, it seems uh, like uh, it, it seems like it has this element of like, "Oh, he will master the elements and become, you know, element." He'll master. become the avatar, <laughs> right? The thing is, he's not really doing that. Um, he, he's, he's finding exactly what the priest is supposed to do and then just does them. And most people, you know, like, let's say, um, the one thing that sort of stuck out to me, this isn't necessarily a spoiler, but um, there there's something that happens in the game. I think, yeah, we I, I, this is this was released, like, they but they've already announced basically something that implies this, so I don't yeah, think there's, it's a Yeah, so, like, there's a war going on, and then Sore gets involved. So what? Most people, like Asbel or Jude, are like, oh, no, we need to go help people, and all this other shit. Sore is very grounded in reality, so he's not very he's not very one-track-minded. He sort of weighs in all of his decisions to make a good decision, and it sort of actually helps because the cast helps him make, make those decisions. Like, one person will say this, another person will say this. That, that actually kind of reminds me of Vesperia, but... Yeah, like, they have to weigh decisions, like, okay, I can't make a dumb decision, and all the party is going to follow along with me. Like, that's not the way it goes. They're like, okay, like, one person is going to say, dude, you got, you, you have to be realistic, like, you can't save everyone, you have to do these things, we're going to have to just move on. Like, like that's how certain situations go, and so, it's really nice. And there's actually that party dichotomy, so... Is that actually, like... Reverend to the story, though, does that actually make an like this? That I mean, you don't make any choices, the but like the way the plot is told is different in a sense from from uh, okay. the previous Tales game. Um, so, well, this no is, branching storylines. This story is a minor like spoiler, that. but one of the character I think this is what Simon was leading into. One of the characters is only in your party for the first part of the game, and then they're, I would they're say like first ten hours, fifteen hours, maybe, and then, and then they're no longer in your party. No, um, they're not. Um, and I guess people made a, a really lot big fuss about got, this. I mean, I'll just say who it is. Because, Alicia. Yeah. yeah, it's Alicia. Um, a lot of people were upset that Alicia was not in the game, like, at post, whatever, uh, 15 hours or whatnot. And they were promoting her on every chunk of them did not even play the game. It's just, like, Otaku is going crazy and be like, oh, no, they destroyed my waifu and all this other shit. And, like, God damn it. I got to that point. Well, I, got I, to I that think point. it's a, there's a lot to be said wife, about having wife movement. Yeah, today. I mean, I got to that point, and I'm like, the reasons they gave are legitimate. Like, this makes sense. It didn't feel like it was something made up on the fly. Like, like the role of why this person leaves in the grand scheme of things makes sense. To be perfectly honest, it oh, the, pace, okay. the pacing of her leaving feels like, oh, hey, 
This is this tra- this was this person wasn't actually going to be a permanent party. This was a person doing her own thing that was a traveling member hey, and Simon. is no longer part of your party anymore because there's okay. other things that Sori is going to do. Simon, this, despite not being a permanent party member, would you say Alicia is still like a key character? Uh, at the point of the game She's I'm on, noted. I would say her existence is a key figure, but her presence okay. there, not so much. Well, Zach was saying, at least, or you kind of started to mention it, like they were promoting her a bunch. Um, well, they, they started out, like she was, her and Sori were the first characters they showed, but it was yeah. kind of apparent after a while that they weren't really showing that much of her. I, I would, um, say, Alicia's, I would well, say Alicia being there is a very, very critical point in the game. Yeah, that's what I'm, th- I think Baba's explanation was, like, well, she's one of the first characters, you know, in the game, so we yeah, show her Yeah, and she's actually the one who sort of convinces Sori to come out of... Some sort of catalyst, yeah. Yeah, she's the catalyst, so she's just, very, just, just an important yeah. character, and I she has I, a role to play, so... It's not like yeah. they literally dimmed her or anything like that. To be perfectly honest, it's like the same, situa- same situation as Flynn in Vesperia, like, sure, you don't get to play as him, but, like, but, but, but Flynn his is presence super important. was important, like, that's... You can't overlook now, that fact. Actually, when I think of this, the first series that comes to mind is Grandia. Grandia has, all, at least the first one and the third one, I don't recall the second too much, have a lot of characters that you start the game with that you don't end the game with. And, and I think that's totally fine. I, yeah, I, I, it's, I, I think it's a, just a different type of idea. Like, um, In fact, actually, some of the other Tales games, it kind of feels silly, like, oh, you form your party, and then like every single character is like with you the entire time, like... Because Always. of the narrative, and then it affects the narrative, and, too. And sometimes they literally hand wave, like, wait, you're coming along with us? Oh, yeah, I have nothing better to do. And it's just like, oh, okay. Um. I, I think from my standpoint is that i seen her being promoted alongside the main character and all those, like, magazine ads and the trailers and stuff like that, and then suddenly it's... They stopped I mean, promoting but, a long time it, By Simon saying that, it's, it's, it makes sense that she leaves the party, then yeah, I, like, I'm completely like, fine she, with it. She I, was, she was stopping like a promotion to a long time ago. Well, like, I think, like, the first Grandia game, I can't remember her name, uh, Sue. You get Sue, who is basically in your party for, you know... Probably the same amount of time, 15 hours, 20 hours. And sure. there's this point in the game where it's actually a pretty sad scene where they're basically like, Sue, you can't stay with us anymore. Uh, and she leaves the Spoilers, Spoilers by the way. Like 15-year-old game. <laughs> That's, uh, don't don't, don't, I mean, don't, don't me, take lightly of the RPG Adam, fan. Is, are, are those characters, <laughs> while they don't obviously show up in the narratives, can you play as those characters end-game, like post-game or whatnot? No, you cannot. You cannot. See, I think that's a weird. I, I think, I think that's, a that's a weird yeah. design decision. Like, let's, I don't, I don't, they I give I very, very good it. reasons in Grandia for why all your party members that's, leave you. So it makes sense that none of them can be played in the post game, especially like in the case of Sue. And I can't remember the other character. Well, but I mean, was, like, as long as they're not integrated into the narrative, if they can play them, is that so much of a? No, it, it they're, definitely are. They're definitely. They're definitely are. Good. Totally are. I think it's fine to have a character who has a role, has an important role, that fulfill the role, and then they're done. They don't stick around the whole game. I think so. That's okay, so spoil it. So I think it's a different like, Tales title. If yeah. you have whatever Tales of Graces, like is that so that that let's say there was no F, just just main arc. Yeah, is that fine with you? Not being able to play Richard. Yes. Yeah, perfectly. Okay, all right, that's fine. Okay, all right, well. and like Grandia three, th- this is barely a spoiler because it happens so early. In Grandia 3, you go through, like, two dungeons with Miranda, who's actually your character's mom. And she's actually probably the coolest uh, character in the game. And then, yeah, she's, cool like, moms. the coolest mom character in any game. Uh, and her and also another character whose name I forget. Um, he's, like, a bartender guy. But uh, anyways, there's a point in the game where they're basically like, all right, our part of the journey is over. Son, who's the main character, whose name I forget, uh... Now it's your turn to go out and do JRPG things, you know. <laughs> so no, like, that, I yeah, guess it, in that sense, it's like, because well, yeah, they're too it old kind of, to be there. It, <laughs> it works with the, how they fit them into the game. Like, they're still important characters, even though they don't stick around the whole time. So I'm kind of, obviously I haven't played the game, but I'm kind of feeling Alicia is, you know, along similar veins. You know, they have a I role mean, I to think, play. I think the they, outburst for Alicia is one of those things in gaming where, like, people it's built a double standard. Spine. It really is a double standard, because the same thing happen, happened to Richard, like, two graces many years ago, but no one bitched about him. Because I mean, Richard isn't a waifu. 
Yeah, Richard Richard is not a waifu. Like, I literally think, I literally can't, I boil this down to, I think it's because people objectify her as a waifu, and they're like, they're sad now. I would say the other thing is that a big part of the Tales fan base is female, and so when they see, like, a female no, character, no, no, it's mostly the guys. That way, this is fun. mostly the guys. Like, I, I, I say this very simply, games are for the guys, Merchandising is for the girls. Uh, well, 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 I don't okay, think no, that's no, very... This is why they removed Yuri of... and Leon from the voting, man. There's a reason. Guys aren't voting for him. I'm, well, I'm pretty sure they are. Most of the guys are. Yuri's awesome. Oh, that's, that's that, that, Yuri. <laughs> Yuri's like the best main character of the Tales yeah, Outside of Yuri, but... Like, we're never gonna get I thought the it. main point for contention for the whole Alicia thing, outside of the waifu status, was that she had a bunch of DLC for her, and people yeah, were really that's, choked... That's, that, yeah. that, that's the other element, like, like that, if, from what if I understand, just ended you can there, still play as their end okay. game. At the end of the game, you can still play her. Well, I, I, I don't know, but, I, like, I, I literally don't know, like, what the status is, like, post-game, but, yeah, we, I was kind of talking about, like, these, you know, games that don't have DLC as, like, you know, it was intentional decisions to have well, them. Well, they had DLC for Richard. In, in so, the week? Just, I don't know, I, it's just dumb. People well, arguing about Alicia being- it's, no, I think it's, it's just the whole practice of that, especially by talking to people I do want to know that they're like gatekeeping the this. gameplay it has a lot of flaws, um, and I'm pretty sure we'll address them to the uh, we'll address them when we review the game. Uh, which supposedly the game is supposed to release within th- six months of uh, the Japanese release. We haven't heard well, we anything about this yeah. version. Me and Adam talked about this offline. We're like, what? Why have we heard anything about this game yet? Uh, I'm sort of getting worried, actually, that this might get delayed a bit. Yeah, it's, I mean, honestly, it's it's we're not close to that point Are, anyway, so it's yeah, it's, it's easy still, to see. They have got all these an announcement games. being formally made for. Actually, jog my memory. When did Zillia Two uh, uh, release date get announced? Uh, like it was like the next year or something. Remember. It was. It came out like it like right out before August. Zillia Two came out. No, no, like yeah, right before release, Zillia came out. Zillia Two was announced. Release? It was like it was like a, a month before no, they, Zillia came they out. They announced, they announced that it Zillia was coming. They, I don't know when they announced the actual yeah. release date of Zillia Two. So like, but anyways, let's see. Is it still too early? I don't think it's early at all. I think they're sort of late actually. At the point. They announced they announced it's Tales of like, Zillia Two's release date in April, and it came out in August. Yeah. Okay, so those Tales games come out in the summer, so, so I, I'd assume it'd be August. Yeah. No, no, they said six months of. So June, yeah, it has to be June. like June or something. I don't. That make, I mean, that makes sense because they could announce it any time. Like they could just be like tomorrow. They could announce it. It doesn't. Because they, they, I'm sure even if they do end up delaying a little bit, oh, yeah, it's going to be out sure. this year. I, I would mean, say get the game like for. I, I've heard a couple of things about the gameplay in terms of like it's kind of like graces in terms of like these skill God, trees. Like graces. I've heard it's kind of like graces with the skill trees, but how it does like your positioning and battle. Like graces had a lot of you know the sidestepping and the you know this the, the different lines. Back to back to Apparently, this is a bit different in terms of like how combos work with your positions and things like that. Obviously, it's hard to kind of grasp that until you play it, but. This game is really an inferior graces in many ways, and a lot of the gameplay, a lot of I've the heard. gameplay problems, by the way, suffer because of the narrative reasons. So heads up. You mean um, you mean like the linking with the uh, yeah, and with you're going to be fusion, playing as uh, a two player or one player for like a long time. The thing is, it's the worst than graces F. Like it's I hate really F bad for that part. Like I'm like just oh. playing as Sori and one seraphim because you can have multiple seraphim in your party. If you don't have two human players, you're not going to use them. So, well, your games. Is it fun though? When you have full, when you have four full, full members doing crazy shit, it is very fun. Um, I would say its auxiliary systems are pretty good. If that's anything, I know a lot of people hate on it, especially the Neo Gap importers. Aren't, aren't, aren't the shops back to being like sell items to shops to raise their level? Uh, not really. Not really. You, like you buy raise the level or something. Like, via stamp system, sort of like graces, except not every town you visit is going to sell uh, an, every, uh, the same equipment and like so the not, same type of equipment. So like I visited three sell, shops yeah. in a row, and none of them gave armor, and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> well, isn't that another thing? Like, you can, like, aren't there the, 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 the what are they called, Neuromen? 
Norman, yeah. Normans, and you talk to them, and they can, like, change things about the area you're in, like, so they can drive. Yeah, you can add, them. like, world effects and stuff like that. Well, you add don't, actually get, get, don't you actually, like, get equipment to drop, kind of like an MMO? Yeah, or? yeah, you do. You do. You actually so probably get more useful stuff from things being dropped than you actually buying them. So, yeah, um, that's, that's, that's pretty new. And, I, I think know. the interesting thing will be the, um, the fusing of equipment, because... You can buy better equipment, or you can fuse your current equipment because the skills on it are on it are good for your character. That's one of those things. Like it sounds like, well, it's a it very good decision making. Well, it sounds like it could be one of that like item fusing and item creating your own equipment. Like that could be really cool, or it could be really tedious. It's so. It's I would say it's shallow, but it's, it's definitely not level, as definitely it not as level decision making that the game otherwise wouldn't have had. So, definitely not as okay. simple as just buy the best equipment. <laughs> no, it's definitely not as simple as you, you you can buy the best equipment and it will drop you like 30 stats, which has happened before. And I'm like, fuck, I'm not doing this. <laughs> yeah, well, like really, is it is it just because the quality of the equipment well, or something you're buying is so skills, buying? You have your skills all arranged in a certain way. You get bonuses for that character. So like, oh, okay. I move this one piece of equipment and I'm like, fuck, I lose 30 stats like across the board or something like that. Oh, you're like, that's... damn. <laughs> That's that the would be is, like, so it's frustrating like to see that. Relying on that for forever, either because like eventually that item is not going to drop, and you can't keep using items to make that equipment better. So, uh, pros and cons. Well, so <laughs> let's, yeah. Well, I mean, I look forward to seeing like how people react to that when it comes to. I wonder well if Bandai like, is going to. I'm expecting six and oh, seven like, across yeah. the board for this game. Yeah, I wonder if they plan on doing the same thing here as they did there and what people's Definitely expectations are in, in the West, the DLC. Oh, yeah, I, I maybe they'll delay it oh, just so they can... Someone made, made a point for on me. the forms that this hysteria uses a new engine. It does. Um, my guess is that this engine was optimized most likely for PS4 because yeah, that would be runs 60, 30 FPS, battles included. Uh, oh. And 30 FPS is lucky, by the way, on battles. Oh. Average is, I would say, roughly between 20 to 25, maybe. Oh. Like, Making a whole new engine just for a PlayStation 3 yeah, game really seems kind of... Cycle. Just because of how successful the PlayStation yeah, 4 has been, yeah. Um, well, so let's let's move on. And so uh, before we get into the Nintendo Direct, because that's going to, I'm sure, take up most of our the rest of our time, but... Uh, there's been a lot of localization news yeah, or at least, lately. Or at least, or at least uh, teasers of it. Yeah. Well, there's been Xseeds announced like a bunch of games. Um, they, they didn't, well, they're not officially they, what they did was yeah. the, like a, it was a New Year's uh, image where they had a bunch of like uh, silhouettes and people uh, on the internet, especially Neo Gaff, had to piecemeal things together and try to like fit the different appendages, and appendages all those to the games slots will come up before the second like chapter. Just saying. I'm sure it will, just because the rest... Well, to be fair, like the stuff that they've announced isn't going to be as big a deal. I mean, except for maybe Xanadu Next. So, there is Xanadu Next. Um, i trying to remember it. Uh, the Onichibara zombie fighting game. Which one is of them ridiculous. was Sendo Kiseki, which also there was a, a trademark for Trails of Cold Steel, which people think... Uh, Sendo Kiseki oh, wasn't one of them, but it, that was, no, that, that wasn't it. It was like Ease, uh, uh, Ease what was six. that? Arc oh, Nepotism. Ease, no, just yeah, Arc and uh, is, is one of them. Uh, yeah, Sendo oh, Kiseki was I, never I, I, uh, a part of that. People I still wanted to be, that trademark though. for yeah. Trails of Cold Steel, or, no, it's a website. It, it was, was a, it was a trademark, just, it, it was wasn't in the domain, image. So yeah. Was, it's it's totally common. It's just it wasn't in that image. That's what I was referring to. Is is the um because I posted the news about Trails yeah. of the Cold Steel. I know it's because the 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 producer pretty much related to like the sound it makes is like Cold Steel, yeah, like the sound of Cold, the, uh, Cold Steel. The title structure. Yeah, it's not. Let's not talk about the other stupid ass <laughs> translation that people have come up with for that. Uh, so there's that. Um, what was the I'm trying to remember, like uh uh yeah. Corpse Party uh. Blood Drive is another one. Um, I think. Of course, second. I think second so, yeah, because I think that was like four. It, it, it doesn't feel like it was this long ago. They announced second chapter in like August or September of 2013. <laughs> Waiting for it. Yeah, and they did the same thing. They put a Twitter image of like someone. Did they say of the they guys were already elbow. like 
had already started on it when they announced that. Uh, the, yeah, yeah the, sure. The, I want to say that. they were lying. Like, well, no, there's there's been okay. there was apparently, apparently some one, very apparently one of the writers was like really sick and wasn't able to translate for like an extended period of time. Or something like that. It's not yeah. like they only have one and writer, though. I think. I think I well, think it's the it's Carpe. It's it's one studio working with Exceed, um, who was taking on a lot of the work, and then circumstances happened. We'll not get into that because it was, uh, it's it was sad to hear about that. But uh, a lot a lot of those things happened last year, and so um, it delayed the project, and then. That pretty much led to well, they're they're back into it and they're talking about it, you know, coming out this year still. It's, I mean, it's just like when they put um, the original Trails and Sky on the PC. Things came things came up where they didn't realize that there was so many trouble that they would have with the engine. Uh, it's, it's, it's like you don't expect those things like, until you get. Like, I know, deep like into Trails in the Sky on PC in Japan only supports you know a handful of resolutions, but in the Steam release for us supports like. 12 different resolutions. Um, hmm. like, it was a different engine, apparently. It was a different the same engine. engine. I think that was but it. The yeah. main thing was they had to yeah. get it to 1080p, so they had to completely redo all the text. Yeah, the font, everything had to be redone, and so that, that was a big part. But yeah, that's, that's part of the delay. But other stuff that they announced, uh, well, they had, that's X Seeds pretty much. Uh, I mean, I, think that's I, I, I feel like no. I'm missing something. Is oh, Xenadu okay. Next well, was one of them. Uh, oh, uh, no, Forbidden Magna. That was the domain the that they one. made. No, oh, they, they it was on the image, too. Like, that was one of the actual, yeah. That, that, it was one that, of the, like the ones I missed. That's like a 3DS SRPG or something? Okay. Yeah, it's kind of like Valkyria Chronicles a little bit. And it's, it's got the whole, like, like moving around like a, a region like to fight. like girls, right? Kind of, I think, yeah. I, I, to be honest, I haven't looked. I, I was when I saw it at Tokyo Game Show, I was like, "This looks pretty cool." It, it got a nice, a nice art style to it, but I, to be honest, so, I haven't read so too much about it. So it's pretty much confirmed you'll uh, review it then. Yeah, pretty much, because uh, I have a 3DS, and so I'm sure I will. Uh, but <laughs> I obviously cover those games for the site. But that's that's about it for Exit, I think, because yeah, the Corpse Party, the PC, and version of Corpus Party and Blood Drive are both coming also out this year, so yeah, big year for that series. Yeah, stuff. Um, the Trails, whenever that comes out, Xenadu next, and... Uh, that's probably not going to be until 2016. East Arc of Nepotism, yeah. or how do you pronounce it? Nepotism. It, there's no other eye. I don't know where you're adding the spell. second eye to, but yeah. It's yeah. Nepotism, yeah. It, it, I haven't it's, played it, so I don't know if yeah, they say it in the game. <laughs> the soundtrack is right. freaking incredible in that game, but uh, that's another thing but yeah there's that and then a bunch of like recent news came out like lost on sword art online lost on is got a trademark in both um america and europe so that's coming how well uh the vita game did yeah. that's not surprising <laughs> yeah there's they've already an announced that the english version it's going to be the producer said he was embarrassed right. by they, the, they the been, english translation right. right. should be right yeah, the the funny thing is, is that people make the argument that like that sold the game for them is the uh, the the poor English in that, and like I would I bought it because it was so funny. I wanted to play it for myself, so it's like fu- weird when they actually take it seriously. What the you reaction you, like, the producers be. or something? <laughs> it was the best selling Vita game last year, and it only came out like in August or something, so it says a lot. Um, but. Uh, and how people really love that series, obviously. Um, so there's that. Uh, Rage Burst got trademarked in Europe, which means God Eater 2 seems likely to come over here uh, sometime soon. Hopefully this year. Um, I said as much, but it's kind of hard to tell. It, it's coming out next month. Uh, this month, excuse me. It's February. It's coming out this month in Europe. And in Japan, excuse me. I'm all over the place. Uh, what else I was think, announced? Uh, I'm trying Rage to, like... Was announced for localization. <clears throat> excuse me. I think that was that was announced like a few months ago, exactly but they I think they Yeah, I think they nailed down a release date. Etrian Odyssey excuse me, Etrian Mystery Dungeon was also already announced coming out here. Yeah. Amco trademarked a whole bunch pretty, of shit. Does that count? Yeah, they trademarked Cinderella Girls, the Auto Master. <laughs> you, of course you would say <laughs> that so much. I would say I want to bring that up on this podcast about RPGs. Uh, a game I'll likely play. 
Uh, and then uh, what else? I, I, that, that's, it's just fantastic to see well, all the news about localization. Like, yeah, the yeah. Bunko game yeah. as well. Not, not, not talking about RPG. There's Dengeki Bunko, and then there's J. Then there's J. All Stars Victory versus or whatever it's called. Yeah, I was like, the fuck. Yeah, and apparently the, the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure game is apparently being localized as well. So it's. Just the fact that they're announcing so much localizations, but for systems that you wouldn't expect it too much for anymore, like Vita, PlayStation 3, like all this stuff, like the stuff you felt like. I know a friend who bought three import copies of Dengeki Bunko, and it's coming over and like, like. What were some whoa. of Sega's he spent like, all this uh, AAA endeavors? Do we know? Yeah, AAA like endeavors. AAA-esque endeavors. Wasn't. Yakuza, the Alien right? game. <laughs> I don't know. The aliens, yeah. Like, um, in, in, yeah, infestation. Not, not the not the recent one, the other one. Oh, Colonial yeah. Marines, <laughs> which was apparently not very good. <laughs> yeah, but that's. I let's... I feel like Sega is taking the same approach Namco did, where like they realized like they can't invest in the AAA, so they're focusing now on niche stuff. Right. It's it, uh, and obviously we benefit being fans of a genre, especially specific games in this genre that speak to us, and so it's 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 great to see that and. Uh, there's apparently, of course, later this year, Level 5 announcing a game at E3 of all places. It's like, I mean, as far as like a Japanese company like Level 5 announcing a game at E3, it's pretty amazing. And it's, it speaks a lot about how important they feel like the, and you were talking about this before. It's like, and, and Darren, it was like how terrible the market is in Japan that they're now kind of focusing more on finding success here, even if the game is bombed. Like, I think, um, what was that other game that came out? Uh, Le- Legend of Oh yeah, Legend of oh, or something. Yeah. Yeah. The Saga, Saga Creator. Yeah, so yeah. That that game got as bad reviews as um, Sisteria did. I don't. I haven't really found out. Apparently, why, the, apparently got, that like, one. Story. It's it's made by like Saga veterans, and I, I mean I don't know why it's getting bad reviews, but apparently it's like not story heavy at all. It's a very much kind of like brandish, I guess, in terms of like. There's like a basic premise, and then it just kind of lets loose, and then you just do whatever. But I don't know. It's got some turn-based style, and I, you know, I posted lots of news on it, so I kind of have a an idea of what it's supposed to do. But I don't know. I don't know about general reception. No, yeah, it's, I I've been hearing that a lot, and so I'm trying to. Uh, I wish I I wish I could find out what it's for, but. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not having I'm not having good luck here. What so? But yeah, there's there's that. But yeah, um, the fact that it's it's probably just like the whole culture change over there has been happening for a while now, and it's the the Japanese like the regular console markets hit like an all time low pretty much, and the mobile game market just keeps going crazy. Like Pulses of Dragons is always going to be like the number one game over there, so why bother? Uh, but yeah, it's it's great to see all that being announced and all this all these new games that us as gamers get to enjoy, so it's pretty exciting times, but um, speaking of which, though, uh, Nintendo having a huge direct uh, that happened Mostly very recently. News. So, Whoa. bad Whoa. news? Well, I would say the... <laughs> That's uh, not at all. Pretty <laughs> cynical thing. For America, for America, it sucks, because they we get treated like some third world... <laughs> oh, okay, let's not go that far. But it's it, it, a lot of weird announcements coming out of that thing. Okay. So um, well, let's start with the, the the showstopper right at the beginning. They announced a new Fire Emblem game right off the bat. That's like they opened with that. It was like really. It's well, they really it goes to show go, how far. Go down from there, so. Well, it it really goes to show how like huge that game's been here in the West. Like. Like, before, no one really knew anything about Fire Emblem, like, all the characters. Like, they know Roy and Marth. I mean, it's, it's, that's all they really knew. And then, all of a sudden, Fire Emblem Awakening comes out, and, like, my Twitter feed just blew up at that news. It really got, kind of goes to show how big that, that series has all of a sudden gotten here in the West. And so, when that game got announced, like, our Twitter well, you feed think about blew it, up. Like, so. it was, like, it started out as kind of like a niche, I mean, in the West. It was like just, these GBA games that were pretty well received, but you know they're just kind of like they weren't in the spotlight. And then they were like on the GameCube, and the GameCube wasn't yeah. a popular system. And then the Wii version was like a sequel, so it wasn't. A, it wasn't and a it was hard to, to find. In, and then yeah. it was a really rare game. So this is like on the 3DS, 
you know. Damn, Adam, and, and you must have really hated Shadow Dragon. I, I totally forgot about Shadow. Shadow Dragon, which is like a piece of garbage. <laughs> <laughs> you must really hate Shadow Dragon. Damn. Yeah. No, I actually, as soon as you started laughing, I remembered, like, oh, yeah, there was a, the DS was popular, and it had a Fire Emblem game, but it was just awful. <laughs> we didn't even get the good Fire Emblem game on the DS. Yeah. Right. <laughs> anyway, so, like, Awakening was basically kind of like, all right, we're going to put this in the spotlight, and we're, we're, you know, and we're going to see how it does, and it did the amazing. The series. Right. <laughs> and so it basically saved the series, you know, or at least it seems to have, and now they have a sequel in the works. Apparently, it's coming out pretty soon in Japan, like this summer. Uh, Which so it's is three years, by the way, since uh, Awakening is released in Japan. So right. It's been a long time, actually. So makes it makes sense, sense. Yeah. But yeah, and so it, it, the trailer doesn't show a whole lot, but we see that it's got the same art style. Dancing Belly Girl. It's That's got, it's got, it's got, it's got the best. It's got shot up <laughs> about the dancer. There's always been dancers. It's got yeah. the. Uh, it's got it's it's got the pairing so system, fun. which I'm not super hot on the pairing system, but it's it's okay, um, and you know so it's and the uh, the the basic story premise seems to be like two armies fighting, and you know okay that seems pretty typical. Rome versus well, Japan. It, the, the, the best part right. is one seems the best part oh, really? is that one seems like a Asian themed dynasty, yeah, and the other is medieval. It's like Sengoku era Japan versus the Roman Empire by the looks of just how the armies, their armor looks. Which, which is perfectly fine, by the way. Oh, yeah. Which sounds awesome. awesome. <laughs> yeah. Like, shit. <laughs> and you have the face of truth there, the giant golem. I want to know if that's like a thing you actually fight. I mean, you want to be the first time we fight a giant golem. It'd be monster. difficult. So I'm totally fine no, with that. certainly. Now, Fire Emblem Awakening, I think, is a good game. It's maybe not my favorite in the series. In fact, it won RPG Sites Game of the Year that year. Hopefully um, so. But not being much of no, your favorite. I think it's a, I think it's a exactly solid game. I just, I, there's some niggles I have with it in terms of a... Uh, you play the other games. I think it's you have more probably more experience like, than Radiant a couple Dawn of people on the site. The oh. Radiant Dawn... Ha- Radiant Dawn has the has really good maps and really interesting objectives at times, and they're unique and interesting. But re- like Awakening kind of had these boring, wide open field maps, and it was almost always uh, kill all the enemies. That was almost always your objective. God, so, I, I, I think that's your only objective. Enemy. Route the enemy all the time, right. <laughs> or, like, or capture the single square. Hey, there what was it's... one map where you had to protect someone. Right. Oh. That's right, and they always die, and I always have to reload because the villagers, the villagers, you had to save the, that one time. Yeah, that so was, oh, I think now dying. that they obviously the like the framework is in place, they can hopefully experiment a little more with, you know, the map, the the the, the map design and the objectives, and hopefully boost that a little bit. Um, That's what they got to beat this time. The That's the most important, important edition. Detail, is that their the three D models also look better, it's, and they have feet. I don't know why. why? For some reason, it made them look cute. I don't know. It's just like you put your fingers on the on like a table I, I and just started walking across. That's what it looks like. Plus. Especially like in the GBA games, this is sort of a callback. Um, <clears throat> in some chapters, um, obviously there is like take siege of the throne or the castle or whatever crap. Get to this point. The throne, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And usually between them, there's a huge army in the way. Well, sometimes what you can do is, like, if you're really bold and you're just like, fuck it, I don't want to fight all these enemies. Or if you have a warp staff. Yeah, you can just go past all of them and get the siege point. But, see, there's that trade-off. If you don't fight these enemies, you're not getting any experience anymore. And you have a limited amount of experience you can earn throughout the entirety of the the game. I actually don't don't think the GBA games are the best example of varied objectives. No, I'm, I'm I'm just saying that option exists. Like, yeah, like, Radiant Dawn. There's a punishment for making a dumb decision. Is what Radiant Dawn was the best at that. Um, even though Radiant Dawn's overall structure was kind of different and weird at times, uh, I think I it by far. <laughs> what? I blame the story. <laughs> well, yeah, it was in the it was in for the sake of the story, and it was okay. I mean, it's kind of a uh, it was almost too ambitious for its own good. But we're digressing. Uh, it's I yeah, I, it's I, I I am a I am. Hopeful for this new Fire Emblem game to be even better than Awakening, kind of you know, be as That's good not... as it was and even better where it can be type of thing. Yeah, I'm expecting sure. like Fire Emblem Six to Fire Emblem Seven levels of 
changes and stuff like that. Let's not to go back. Let's not make the downgrade that was seven and eight, uh, d- despite how awesome it frame was. Oh, I'm assuming. Like, let's not. I would I would imagine they're just going to build off everything that they made with one, the breaking. One thing and I didn't enjoy better. was how in the original GBA titles and even the older ones, like the promotions, like it mattered which unit you used because yes. you can promote to certain stuff. Like, and then obviously Sacred Stone is introduced introduced by promo, uh, uh, by choice promotion, and I think that was I was okay. It wasn't bad. I wasn't completely turned off by it. Awakening, like they gave promotions to everyone. I was like, the fucking shit. Why? Yeah, I don't, I don't really like the idea that you can basically make any character any unit that or. Is very, that, I mean, there's some, you know. There, there are a couple characters like, oh, you cannot change your mage to a swordmaster. You know, there's a couple of restrictions, but there's. For the most part. <laughs> you, you can like change every character to like at least six other units, and I, I, I don't really like that level of freedom. It feels like it's just making things. Way too easy to break, or you mean you didn't have enough gale mass, uh, gale force units on your team? <laughs> like, right? It's I think it's I think it just opens it up too too easy to like cheese things. Like rather than thinking like strategically, oh, I need to use these characters in this way to be the most successful. It's just like oh, just make a bunch of these flyer units with gale force, uh, that being the most broken unit, and cream everything. It just it makes just it too even reclass easy. them. Right. It's even worse. Like, Awakening, Awakening's game balance, to, the way it did it was, hey, let's just make enemies ridiculously strong in higher difficulties and just let the players grind to their heart's content to make yeah, god the, units. Just wait to get Tharja, and, and then, then she just destroys everything. Status, they're not even necessarily that great. I'm <laughs> just saying. Well, and the higher the, difficulties they keep. The grinding yeah. element is also a little bit annoying. Like, that, that's even a thing. Like, my favorite games, it's impossible to grind. Um, I mean, still, I still think Awakening was solid. The, the strategic gameplay is, is is rock solid. Just a couple of things that listen after Shadow Dragon, you can only go up, man. <laughs> that is true. Well, that's uh, I'm imagine that's the kind of stuff that they're probably focusing on. I mean, they're very smart yeah. people. I'm sure that that's what but they're focusing on is variety now. See this really? That's what I'm really curious about. In in the West, I think I would think be a better question. January yeah. next year. Good. Is that a good bet, guys? Is that when it came out? A year Awakening later. Awakening came like out here? Early, remember, year later. I think, early? I think Awakening like came early? out in Japan. It's like February, summer. America, I believe. Awakening came oh, out in yeah, Japan. Yeah. April. Like summer of 2000. And April, tw- April 19, 2012. And then it came out in America 2000, really? February 2013. So, you know. Almost After two, years. That's, that's, nine, okay, yeah. I'm, I'm seeing the localized. Well, they were very slow yeah, to I mean, talk about. Because of how successful it was, yeah, they probably turned around quicker really? here now. Do you guys that think they're going to release it, this by the holiday season? I could see it coming out Christmas if they pushed well, it. Yeah, yeah, I if I was working at Nintendo, I would say that's a dumb decision. Just saying. Why? A game sold really well. What else? Like it, oh, it's, a, it's, a, yeah. it's profitable. It's terrible to release a handheld, a handheld game, even if it's an excellent handheld game, in the middle of holiday season. It's just a terrible yeah, idea. There's better games to market than Fire Emblem, no matter how successful it is. They can make a new Mario or Zelda game instead. Yeah. Zelda 2015. Well, like, Zelda's coming out in 2015. If it doesn't get delayed, that's going to get more marketing. Oh, to be fair, I mean, like, Pokemon comes right. out in November. So it's they, not they like that this, crazy. I just have this I mean, come out in, uh, in January next year. They'll be fine. Like, they'll survive. They won't, they'll I want survive. it now. Well, I... It probably could do better if it was marketed better. I mean, it's... I think it's just that, um... Right now, Nintendo's got, like, obviously a huge amount of games coming out in the first half of this year. They need more than just probably another Pokemon out this fall, so it's like maybe they could put Fire Emblem there. So it's it's not... I don't it's, see it, like... Uh, it's going to be uh, either yeah. late this year or early 2016. It's not going to be, like, late 2016. <laughs> it's not going to be late any time. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, they, they, they can do the Atlas thing, and they're probably, like... Localizing it at the exact same time that they're making no, they're it for not. Japan, so no, it's not just that. I can, I'll bet you. I'll bet we'll you. I'll I mean, bet it's, you we'll wait and see. They're not. They're not smart, dude. They're know. not that smart. <laughs> well, enough for America. Also, It'll come out in Europe this fall. Like happen. America, would be like in 2017. That's how they treat us here. Bravely Default came out like a lot, like six months before we got it or something crazy. What? Um, Bravely but, as an example? That's terrible. I'm just I'm just speaking of how Europe gets as Nintendo of Europe has been treating their 
Europe is their fan base a hell of a lot better. Speaking of which, with the news of the new 3DS <laughs> coming out, what a broken uh, that in Europe, they'll be getting the new 3DS and the new 3DS XL with all the and do they call great things like the face plates and all that <laughs> stuff. And in America... We are only getting the 3DS XL. This is a win New for 3DS America. XL. Excuse I don't know me, why I gotta... this is a downturn. Europe gets two shitty consoles. We get one. How is that not a victory for us? Shitty console? What are you talking about? Shitty console. It's better in every way, basically. It's it's better. It's like the new 3DS, the normal one. It actually has a bigger screen too. Uh, so it's actually it, uh, like it, it improves upon the. It's it's. it's kind of, I would say it's not. It's, it's, uh, it's not meant to be like. It's, you know, the DS to the 3DS as, like, a generational jump. It's meant to be just that. a boost. It's like the GBA, the GBA SP or something. No, no. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, the Game Boy, the Game Boy Color. It's the Game Boy Color. This is going from a... Yeah, the, the like GBA SP didn't have exclusive. To a DSi. That's what this is. And it's going to be dumb. It's just like it was back then. I mean, DSi then only had, like, one it. game. If you love, if you're, if you're okay with your 3DS or 3DS XL, then don't worry about the 3DS, the new 3DS. I'm just saying Nintendo is prone to making bad decisions... Naming scheme is, like, far yeah. below the list of all the problems. I would say the difference here, though, is that the new 3DS um, with the faster processor is a What's significant it gonna be? Faster upgrade. Loading times? I think it if we're just... It does. It actually... The, it, everything it's loads a lot faster loading. in that it's not game. Gonna, it's not going to change gameplay. It doesn't change... It, it makes all the difference. I mean, you're talking about a... I think if you're talking about a handheld system where you want to get in, play some games, and get out, it's. I think, I think they it showed makes something the for like the new Monster Hunter game. Like the new 3DS will actually show better textures than the old yeah. one. Like literally, like not, yeah. not, just, not just higher I mean, the fact textures, that but actually like to... loading better textures. So it's not going to load better textures; it's just going to load the textures faster. Like that's not the way it works. That's not how the technology works. If that's what they're saying, they're lying. I don't believe them. I, I'm just, well, like, I'm just I, I think there's, there's, there's a lot of... Like, it's just not going to change it. I may, I, may be, I may be jump prematurely, but I know there's something about the textures being, like, a noticeable improvement and not just, like, an upscale or whatever in the... It's probably just loading faster. I'm pretty sure that's what Well, there's, there's that. It's not just the, the faster processor, which I think is, is, is big. As okay, I personally find that. Okay, it's an extra stick at two um, fucking buttons. Whoop, but, whoop, it's not an extra second. It's like almost like fifteen, it's, twenty it's seconds. A it's, it's a very significant. The new 3DS games. Very, like you put the exactly like you put those. The, they have a video on YouTube where you can watch like the old and the new side by side, and it was, I'm, it's it's a lot faster. It's like going. It makes, it's not but, um, significant enough to the point where like why like. I, w- I would say it's the there's there's a lot of arguments that can be made for and against it. I mean personally. I don't like how so far there's only one been game. like one game announced that's actually exclusive to the thing. Well, I think there's like a, a second one, but it, I, I, it's, I'm blanking on it. Otherwise, like even the new Fire Emblem game, I think is on the old and the new 3DS, and so it's like they're. It seems like they're not really pushing it that much, uh, at least in the early part uh, on onset. So, but like spending over two hundred dollars for a game. A quote unquote bundle that doesn't come you know with an I AC think? adapter I in think the West. Instead of the three DS XL, we were supposed to get the new three DS XL. But they hadn't they hadn't mm-hmm. prototyped it fast enough so but they needed to get an XL out to revitalize the market, so they released the XL and now that they have finished on the new three DS XL, they're like, Well, it's not like we cannot release this after putting R and D into this, so we're gonna release it. Oh, That's yeah. what I'm seeing about from this. Four years. That's just ineptitude from the window. Well, the 3DS, well, the, the original 3DS came out, like, in early 2011. I mean, it's it's like, you're talking about, like, four years difference, and the 3DS XL is just, like, a, a logical next step in that whole thing, because right, they've done I think it, it should past. have come earlier. It should but, have come when the, new, when the 3DS XL was launched. Instead of the 3DS XL, we should have gotten the no, new they 3DS would, XL. I, I think you would have a Why? lot of issues with that. But about, it's Because it's all, you're talking about, like, you, you get an old system... And then the new one has a whole new processor and all this stuff. It's Why like wouldn't I have you were com- that was Italy and oh, way more people I think, if it did yeah. like that. For not really caring about new 3ds, you sure are ranting about it a bunch. I mean, it's just dumb decision. <laughs> like I just look at this and like, what the fuck is this? Like, 
Why would you like you're you you're already making a mistake with the DSI? They've done it in the past. You already made a mistake with new. the DSI. Why would you do a DSI Redux? Like, it's more than that. I, I totally don't. I it's do not so see this as a DSI. I see this as a game. It's better part. hardware. It's definitely it has not the second nub. There's games to be optimized for it. It's faster. It's a bet. I don't. I think the battery is battery life is the same, but it also has much better 3D. Like it's overall a much okay, better system. It, yeah, it tracks your head there for the 3D. I just don't look at it as, I, like, I don't even look at this as, like, a 3DS 1.5. I just look at this as, like, a 3DS 1.25 or 1.5. How? It's, it's, it, oh, you really it's nailed that. It's, 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 it's like comparing, it's like, it's probably the biggest step up in a Game Boy since the Game Boy to Game Boy Color. Whoa. In terms of power. Oh, no, exactly. That's that's, uh, that's how you see it. It's, you see, this is the Game Boy Color. This is pretty much what it is. It's because they increased everything, the processor, the, the rendering, the it's all that, that. You know, consoles have, like, redesigns, too, with internal changes. Like, but they're not this substantial, well, they, Usually, it's like, with the PlayStation, they remove <laughs> I know, I'm just that's saying that. That's how they do it. But. Yeah, well, there's like, nothing, like, really this <laughs> substantial. Like, the PS3 loading times aren't really different at all or anything like that. Like, the stuff under the hood no, is never different. Changed. So, it's... it's it's, it was yeah. the same Blu-ray drive throughout exactly. the entire time, yeah. I mean, it makes the system more stable. It doesn't cause it to brick or anything like that. Like, it's just... Like, hardware stability, to me, matters more than gimmick... Like, adding stuff to make gameplay stuff better in this situation. If I want a new console, I want the hardware to matter significantly. Hey, you know what You know what game I'm, like, well, really super yeah. excited for? Please don't Majora's me. Mask. Majora's Mask, which is the best 3D Zelda game. And if you think raw, otherwise you're wrong. Yes, it is. I well, agree. Oh, well, man, that's the, quite... The, I don't know about the, that. I mean, I love what you're doing. on the 3DS. I don't Better care what it's... I, I You'll have a second stick. It's, it's, I was it's, trying to get us away it's from not, this it's not, it's not, new 3DS. It's boring, honestly. I'm bored by it. Okay, fine. Majora's Mask. <laughs> fine, Majora's Mask. Best 3D Zelda game. They butchered it. Kings of Kingdom Come. I can barely call this fucking Majora's Mask anymore. Okay. That's so, so what are you talking game? about? Oh, my God. Okay. What are you talking okay. about okay. butchering? Okay. What are you so talking about? they changed the save system. At first, that's... I was like, uh, that's kind of a bummer. And then I realized, like, I'm so familiar with the game. I don't remember the last time I had to, like, load a save because I screwed up or because I, you know. It's a design it... decision. Like, I just don't fucking... <sighs> I need to walk away. You do the sound of time so... backwards. Or do it uh, double time. You do the notes no, two times in a row, really and then you. I, I, I think. I think. I'm just talking about like you never. I never you ever rely so on the save points. In like the that. original game, you could only save when you reset time. This meant like if you screwed up, if you died, or if you like, I don't know, if you messed up a quest because you like. I, don't, I, I mean, I. I well, there aren't that many Some... quests that you know. There are a couple that take place like on the night of the final day, like the can't the the, the yeah. mass the Anju and Kefe quest. Or cafe, however you pronounce his name. So oh, that, that was, one, you that have to like rough, do a sequence yeah. of things throughout the throughout the set of three days, and then at the very end, there's yeah. like a, a you're at the hideout, and you have to do a certain thing. So you can screw up, and since you can't save, you have to start start all the way over. So I guess now you can save beforehand, and you don't have to restart as much. Because no, you, you don't can... have to restart. No, 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 not as much. You don't have to restart at all. Yeah, but that's not a big deal because that I... That is a big deal. I think that's a good game. thing. For, like, one small quest that I never oh. had problems with anyway. You're talking about, like, archaic game no, design no, no, that no, made sense, like, 20 years design. ago. It is literally smart, immaculate game design is what it is. Because when you have the save soft, when you have the save system tied to resetting it, now you're making the point of, okay, the things you do are permanent, but if you fuck up, you have the opportunity to restart it. It's not a simple restart of a single base yes. state. You're, you're, you're restarting the entire cycle because now you're making you're delivering the message to the player that the cycle actually matters. I'm it's gonna, not I'm a single gonna, linear game. You're you're kind of speaking on like a cloud level, like up you know up in the sky looking down on it. I'm just going to be a little bit selfish here. I played the original Bedora's Mask so many times because it's a great great game, and I personally never have issues where I need to like. Oh, I'm going to have to restart because I screwed up. So I mean, I never had that problem the fact, too. The fact that I'm going to have to save, you know, that I can save whenever, is merely just a convenience, and like it's not even—it's barely even a convenience because how often are you actually going to be like, oh, well, I lost all my hearts, but good thing I made that save at that owl statue now, and that allows me to do that, so I don't have to start all the way over. That's like, like the the actual specific instance. 
where having a, a new save system is actually going to be a benefit to me is is basically zero. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. No, wait. It's not even a matter of benefit. It's a different. It's a different design entirely. Its philosophy is completely different to what. It, it's not. It's literally not going to affect my playthrough at all. This, like I said, I'm going to be selfish here. I'm going to do the quests. I'm going to do the dungeons. And I am going to restart time when I need to, when I have to do right, another right. quest. It literally doesn't affect so how like, the game is played. You're right. No, I understand I'm, that. Like, when I'm playing the game, there's having that extra ability to save is not really changing anything. <laughs> no, I understand that. But by giving a player more option, you're changing, like, the soul of the game, of what it was. And I'm not sure if I agree with that. I, don't. I, I think I think that's I mean, options of it good. a bit too far. I think so too, because like, how often are you going to be in a situation where you're going to have to reload a save, like, especially with George Mass? I'm that's saying not. by adding in that option, the design intent of the game has changed. Now the developers look at a way well, like, okay, there for those who cycle want it. really yeah. doesn't matter because I'm just going to make this a linear game that sort of sort of loops back. I think it's also the fact, like with the 3DS, it's that when the battery dies, that's like you lose it. Why like, don't you? That's like the Vita where it's like it tries to keep the state anywhere instead of at the owl, like. The next, the next, because the next it's the same. You're basically arguing the same thing at that point. Anywhere, it's right? like a temporary save. That's what it is. No, it's not. It's a, a temporary save because, like, but it's the no, same. It's you're making the same thing. It's you're going around in circles. A <laughs> it's like save it's, anywhere and a temporary save anywhere. So if I close the 3ds and open it back up, that's a temporary no, no, save. No, no. Instead is, of is, having an owl to temporarily save the file, just click save. It temporarily saves it. But when you load it up again. You have to you have to either use the song of time to reset, or you can actually save anywhere again. Well, you when you load the save, you're back at that. But owl. the save I mean, is gone like forever, it's, it's, so then you can't abuse the yeah. save. Well, you can just make another temporary save. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you yeah, can't abuse keep it. Doing it over and over. I guess. I mean, the, okay, so here, I'm, I'm, I'm I gonna, think it's going to make it go for the platform. platform. When the game originally launched in Japan, Majora's Mask for the N64. There was no owl save. There was no temporary save system. The only way to reset, I mean save, was to reset the time cycle. That was the only way to save. Um, and was that the absolute best implementation? That was not the best. That was not that was, was not user friendly ago. because the idea was you had to if you were in the middle, but you had to go somewhere. So let's say I'm playing in the middle of a forest, temple dungeon, what uh, or whatnot. I, I just don't care. I'm in the middle of a cycle. I'm in the middle of a cycle. And I want to continue, but I can't because I need to go grocery shopping because my mom is yelling at me or whatever. I don't care what the reason is. I'm, go- I'm leaving. The only way to save is for me to reset the game, or I can just leave it on the whole time. Probably not going to leave it on the whole time. To alleviate that, they had to alleviate that in the U.S. release and the EU release of the game, they added an L, which is temporary receive. Now, this is not a game design philosophy changing decision because what you're doing is you're effectively putting a pause on where you're currently at. That's all it's doing. That's all it is doing. You're not making a permanent save. You're just pausing it so you can con- continue to come back later. And when you resume it, obviously, there is no save. So it, it essentially, you're just continuing, continuing on as you normally would. And adding a permanent save completely changes that. So the next logical step what Nintendo should have done when they made this 3D game is to have a temporary save anywhere rather than just at the owl so they can just pause and resume whatever you want but still maintain that cyclical cycle of the gameplay. That's what you should have done. The thing is, the, the thing, thing is, is, I don't think yeah. it... Like, you're, you're bringing this back to game design, but I don't think it fundamentally changes much of anything. Like, when I'm playing no. the game, I'm doing a dungeon or things like that, I, I don't think having that extra save, like, not at the beginning of the cycle, but somewhere in the middle, it's not going to, like, change the way I approach things. It's not going to change the way I play the game. Um, it's not going to change it for you, but now because there are more options, people are not going to tackle it in the way it's in, in, it was initially designed for People are going to save. People are going to keep I mean, resetting and, and keep going to that save again and again and again. Rather think, than, wait, wait, wait. Do you think people are going to load most, a save like a lot oh, yeah. in some sort of way? How? I mean, some asshole is going to be stuck at. But that was that was also like the bad part of that game is that how tedious it could be when you start at the beginning and then like okay, that's for the second time again. Twelve hours. Remember, Twelve hours. Remember, that's, 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 that's a different no, argument from the save system, though. That's I actually a, remember, I remember once in the original game, one of the quests. Uh, to get one of the bottles. Like, you go to the graveyard on the third night, and you have to lead the di- grave digger around with this annoying light thing. And you have to lead him around like this 
room, and you fight a big Poe, and then you get a bottle. And you kind of have that. That's that's one of the quests that's at like on the third night, so you have to do it relatively fast. I remember once I actually ran out of time on that part, and I had done other stuff on that um, on that run, because so I had to do it all again. This was like my first time playing the game. You guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I, I, know, I, I know exactly what you're I talking think, about. Yeah, I recommend yeah. that. So, like, yeah. so, yes, it's like, okay, because I had to save, you know, at the beginning, now I have to do that stuff again, which, you know, this was my first time playing. So it's like, okay, I wasn't really, I didn't know what I was doing at that point. Um, do you really think making it to, like, I can make a save in the middle of it, rather, or, you know, maybe on that third day somewhere, rather than at the beginning, is like, that's going to make it so much worse that I only have to redo less stuff than, than, than the whole three days. <laughs> you should be punished, that's, that's should be punished a lot of for not saving. You should be punished for getting greedy. Uh, like, that's like the exact same argument I can make in Dark Souls. likes that. If you don't go back to the bonfire to, to save and get all your souls, like, that's your fucking fault you lost the souls. Like, it's not my fault. <laughs> it's purely a convenience that's, thing. I think, like, I, think I don't I, see the I, issue with it. <laughs> I think the design of the game being centered around a looping three-day structure, which hasn't changed, is the main thing, not where it saves. Also, Dude, some motherfucker they, is going to load Great Bay Temple at the third day and going to reload that save so many fucking times trying that shit. Who cares what they like, think? Some motherfucker is going to do it. I can guarantee you. Who cares what they do? It's it's your own style. Like, Anyways, don't use it if you don't want it. Uh, I mean, one thing they did change was apparently when you do the song of forward time, before you could only, before you could only yeah. go like oh, a half day. It was twelve hours, night, like dawn then night, the next dusk day. And now you can, I guess, and... go as far ahead or back as as much. You know, not back. You can't go. You can't hour, go back. Hour but, increments, I think. Uh, only to the first day, but it you can, can be go very forward. Very specific to where you. You land. can go forward to a very specific hour, which is actually a good thing. I, I know that's all your life change. Yeah. Since I've repl- since I've replayed this game several times, I kind of know like this happens at this time, or at least have a rough idea. Where, it's all like, speed running going on. I now. will warp it to a certain day, and I'll literally. I, I remember playing this. I would like take off the inverse song of time, so time would go at its normal rate, and I'd like wait outside a door or at a certain place waiting for something to happen. So ha- having that extra control of going to a specific time of day, I think helps a lot. I do want to make a point out that that yeah, is not a design time. change. That is a quality of life change. That is actually making not the game tedious. That that's actually making the game easier. Not it, it works for the platform because you don't have all the time in the world to I'm sit just around saying, like, and wait for something when you got. There's a difference between like changing the philosophy of the game and changing the game, so it's easier like on the player, but still maintaining that core. That's, that's what, what when, when it comes to me and sitting in front of the D 3DS playing the game. Like I am not going to care at all that I can make extra saves. Like I'm not going to use them. <laughs> I'm so, sorry for you. Sorry, soul, soul to experience. Three of the greatest it's, dungeons it's all about the plot. Zelda history on the third fucking day. Super setting, dude. It's, the saves are not going to ruin that, though. I think it's the, the same games there. It's it's just an extra per- permanent save. I think it's... Especially it's, on a handheld where... That's what I'm saying, on a handheld. You want it? Fifteen years later, you know, they, there's, they got to make some changes to that if it's going to fit. Yeah, on so that. have a temporary save everywhere. Well, that's, that's, no one's going to like that. Why would people eat it? I think it's just important to have a permanent save, especially, like, if you're talking about being able to save it to, like, the I mean, SD card and stuff like that. You know, it's, it's all this I People want to pick but up part where they left off. Best 3D Zelda, uh, 3D Zelda in the world, go get it. It's good. Apparently, they did change a couple of too, other small things, like how your notebook works. So, like, it'll actually, like, alert you. That's, yeah, so the bomb is still working. Yeah, like, I, I assume you have to see it once. Or like if some if if there's an event happening at yeah. a certain time, yeah, it'll actually right. alert you. Hey, this event is going on right now, or something like that. That is so. It's I like Dead Rising in a way. It's like it tells you this is coming up. Not not when you see them, but That's, when you load into that area, they'll, it'll like say, "Hey, there's another event going on." Yada yada like, yada. For this quest or that, I guess the bomber's notebook is separated by characters. So. Yeah, my question, my bad is that it'll say a question mark, and once you talk to that character, it'll. Yeah, you know, like it might it might clue you in like. Hey, there's an event that happens Context. with this character at this time. You have to figure out what it is. I mean, that's that's kind of a. I mean, I love the game. It's kind of you know, once you once you know the ins and outs of all the quests, obviously it loses a little bit of the 
uh, intrigue, but <laughs> anyway, good. yeah. Well, so let's let's move into the the last big game that was announced. I mean, they uh, talked about a lot of stuff season. there, like a new Rhythm Heaven <laughs> and stuff, but they showed off more of Xenoblade oh, Chronicles God. X, uh, the <laughs> upcoming sequel to Xenoblade Chronicles coming out, uh, and surprisingly, I think it's coming out like in April? two and a half months from Is now it? In, in Japan. Pretty quick. Yeah, and uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 3D comes out the same around the same time, but yeah, it's coming up like very soon in Japan. Um, and yeah, they showed up a lot of stuff in that game, especially promoting like the big open world, and it was a more story driven trailer that they showed off. And so it's you got to feel for more of the characters. Uh, but yeah, there's uh, I I did see a little bit of a mixed reaction. I mean, I think the game looks incredible. It's better than everything, um, dude. It's Same. that. The the oh the world looks interesting to how open world it is and being able to ride yeah. around on these mechs so just the, like how you wanted the to. The structure in is a years. little. I mean, obviously the game's not out yet, but the structure seems a little different from Xenoblade Chronicles. A little, but very yeah, different. Oh, that, no, I, well, so. I didn't mean little. I guess as in small, but it's different. Like Xenoblade Chronicles, it was a linear game and it was narrative heavy, but it did have lots of big open areas. And Which people you like that. Stuff. Which you can do meaningful stuff. Yeah, I mean, I, I know common criticism of Xenoblade Chronicles was like the quests, you know, fetchy quests and gathering and kill so many enemies and things like that. But Xenoblade Chronicles X, yes, we do have some characters. They've actually started, you know, putting up character profiles on the website. Like, these are the characters in the game. Um, but it seems to be kind of MMO-ish in terms of, like, it's not a linear story, They've actually have announced some details like there's different elements to the story, and there's actually like different, I forget what the term they used was, like paths you can take in terms of like what you are doing. So it's, it's way more open ended. Oh. That seems, I don't know how to feel about that, taking on more elements of like the Western RPG style. I mean, it does sound like they also mentioned about that there'd be some online. Uh, I don't know if persistence is the word, it's like but it's souls. more like it's there's like souls. It's you passive might, online. Yeah, it's it's passive um, online uh, features in that game. They I don't know if they've really talked too much about that. I guess it's probably by uh, design that they don't talk too much about it. But don't talk about the it yeah the, the the world design looks good. But uh, yeah, as we, as we were talking about earlier um, off. Uh, recording. It's yeah. So <laughs> I'm, I'm looking up. This models. apparently was released in Famitsu. I'm looking at the translations on Gap. Uh, Are you looking at oh, the good. one titled Xenoblade Chronicles X: New Info from Famitsu? Mass yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm already reading that thread. Yeah. Okay. So like, there's these unions, and the unions do different things, and you can basically like one's in starts of exterminating protests, which I assume is some faction, and then there's like hunting down dangerous life forms and things like that. And I guess you get to pick. Oh, you yeah, you join a faction, faction that's and that's right. going to change what you're doing and, like, how you progress. And I assume that's also going to, that's also probably that one of the uh, passive gonna... online components as well, probably. Right. So it, yeah, it, and it somehow ties to the story as well. So it's, it's kind of MMO-ish, kind of Western RPG-ish. Obviously, it's a JRPG, a Japanese so. RPG in style and things, but it's, well, that's what I meant by different from Xenoblade Chronicles. So... It's hard to say. Obviously, a lot of Xenoblade, a lot of Xenoblade Chronicles fans are excited for it because it's the sequel or the follow-up. But it's this doesn't not, seem like a successor to Xenoblade as well because, because Xenoblade was I, a linear game and it had open-world elements that yeah. were populated with side stuff. This is literally the inverse where you have open-world stuff and then it seems like the main plot is sort of the side, like the fuck. <laughs> We, 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 yeah, we I mean, it's, hard, it's hard to judge how prevalent the story is oh, yeah, going right. to be at this point. Yeah, it's, it's, it's too early. It's, I mean, you can kind of clue you in that it's you know it may it, it would be surprising if it wasn't as narrative you know focused as you know Blade was. When did when did when I mean did I would out? say the concept of of like joining a faction and then it having its own story like the characters you get to know through the through, the, through those uh, factions and all this stuff. I think it sounds pretty cool. I mean, it's the idea of, like, you get all these quests and things like that. I mean, obviously, it's it's a way to fill out, like, the world by giving you, like, you can join this faction, and then here's all these quests, and you go to these different points of the world to do this very specific thing, like mining or uh, 
bounty hunting or whatever it's going to be, and then, like, being out in that. But it, it depends, yeah, as you said, it's, it depends on what exactly their aim is by having this become such a strong aspect of the game. It's that, does it mean that there's going to be, of all these factions, is there going to be a separate ending right. for each of those? And, 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 can, and, can, you do, and can you do more than one, or...? Yeah, can you join more than one, or do you have to create a new like, avatar to even like, if you have multiple endings? To me, that spells out this story is not going to be as tight as. There's actually. It's, it actually uh, kind, it's of, a kind of a I given. Kind I think, of think yeah. of like Skyrim or Fallout. Yeah. Um, in terms of like, if you do, if you oh, join oh, a certain bye, group and kind of do their storyline, it might lock you out of another one. Um, and there isn't like a better choice or whatever. It's just whatever you decide to do. Uh, like obviously. Something from like. I don't know if it's just exactly the same. It sounds, it sounds really inferior to Xenoblade Chronicles. How about, how about, uh, I have to remain to be seen. I mean, you have to play it first, but like, I can, I can definitely see how it's, I think, as you said, okay, Simon, that so it's just for, just for perspective's that. sake, <clears throat> Xenoblade Chronicles, or I guess just Xenoblade in Jap- <clears throat> Japanese, came out June 10th, 2010. This was five years ago. Um, it came out in yeah. Western Shores, Europe first, on August 19th, 2011. So that's like almost a year earlier, pretty much. And then, like, it was, like, when it March, came out, when they came out in the West, huh? And right. no one could when find it. it. <laughs> when it came out on Western Shores, a lot of people praised its open, open, um, what's it called, open world. Um, and not, not so really much of the elements world. that make, not so much of the derivative GRPG stuff that, you know, stood out. So, that, like, oh, I will say the story in Xenoblade does get, like, super JRPG cliche near the end. <laughs> yeah. So, like, it didn't get much point of that. A lot of the praise from Xenoblade Chronicles is stuff that sort of, that me- that Western sort of mentality, the open world, and all this other stuff like that. And, and the, okay, music. the music is its own separate. That's not really a gameplay element. But, um... I know, I'm just... I'm just I think the developers saw the praise for this and literally ran with it, and I think that's why we're seeing the direction we're seeing with the Xenoblade Chronicles X. And that literally frightens me, because now we're, we're, we're getting a JRPG that's trying to be a Western RPG, but that's not my main problem with it. I can see them literally falling flat on execution. We're going to need something along the lines of, like, Ubisoft bullshit, like, just, like, yeah, not meaningful that, that's content. Actually... Go ahead. Like, I don't know. This Like, this game, like, I, I read this, and it's just, like, it's literally a recipe for disaster. Like, here, I'll just read off some points. Xenoblade was traditional RPG, whereas Xenoblade X is an open-world RPG, um, Xenoblade has, well, okay, that's, uh, Mira is 400 kilometers squared, which is five times bigger than Xenoblade. Why the fuck does a game need to be that big? Well, that actually, game? if there's a lot of mech travel and mechs move, you know, faster than walking speed, then it, and it has to be bigger to complicate But you're not going to have a mech right away in the beginning. Well, so, are you, how are you going to populate the land with a on foot? You can get, like, I mean, a buggy or if something. if you can traverse <laughs> faster, <laughs> then the size has to kind of fit that, you know? Like, I know, like, some people say, like, well, like, I, I forget which racing game it is, Driver. Like, Driver has the biggest open world, and it's like, well, of course, you're driving, like, a car going 80 miles an hour the whole time or something. You know, it's different than an MMO. But that's, whereas with Driver, that's the only mode of tra- transportation. Here we have multiple modes of transportation. So you have to have content filled out on a large map that's going to fit all modes of transportation, not just that one. So, like, when I look at this and say it's five times bigger than Xenoblade, I'm just looking at this as, like, the red flag going off. my. Like, what the fuck are they going to fill this map with? Well, that, that, actually is, that, that actually is my worry. Like, what what is the specific thing you're going to be doing, like, when you're actually playing the game? Like, when you're, play, when you're playing, uh, when you're playing Xenoblade, thing. sorry, like, yeah. when you're playing Xenoblade, like, oh, normally it's, you see a cutscene, Something happens in the story, so of course you want to get to the next story bit, but usually that involves, okay, we need to traverse this open area to get to the next one. But in the meantime, you can do a couple of quests. The quests affect, like, your uh, like your affection with your other characters that you can boost okay. and things like that. And now, um, just to interject real quick, like, the map, the level design in Xenoblade is good. Like, even though it's a large map, like, there was a lot of meaningful stuff on right. that map. Like, like level the, design was good and stuff like that. Like, no, so it's, it's kind of it's linear, as we said. You go from one area to the next, but if you kind of, you know, go off the path, you might find, like, a high-level monster, you know, and or a rare monster to take down. Why not? Just take it down um, if you can. And... There's quests and other things, so there's all these there's these things kind of like distracting you from the main story, but the main the main thing to do was to kind of go from point A to point B in a linear line. Here, it, that doesn't sound like it's the case. 
So there is no the. I mean, it's we're you know, it's, it's a lot of conjecture right. though. It's like I mean, we don't that, really know like well, what exactly they're gonna do with it. That's no, yeah, on but them. They even you know? said it here, right here. It says Xenoblade was linear despite having a big world. In Xenoblade, you will get quests from different places and have more freedom. Like, like this I, is an alarm. I kind of, I kind of <laughs> a dozen, I'm kind of imagining like a Fallout where you do revisit areas a lot, like. Uh, if it's 400 kilometers squared, I don't think it, it, well, that's probably going to happen that often. But I would, the, the, the thing I will say, I'm sorry, to, I just want to mention this, is that I wish, because you mentioned about the travel, it's like, I kind of wish in that trailer they put out, they did not show the on-foot traversal, because it looked weird running up the hills and stuff like that, trying to jump up, and it just like, the textures didn't really fit. It looked kind of funny, but I just wanted to Anyways, it, it looks to be a very ambitious game, and that, that it could, you know... Yeah fall flat on its face, like Simon said, if it's just... Oh, it will. If it... <laughs> if it... It's, it's the thing, it's like, Xenosaga was them going too far into narrative, and then Xenoblade Chronicles X looks like it's too much into the gameplay, so who knows if they're going to well, strike that balance. Well, if it's big for being big sake, then, like, how much fun will that be? That's, yeah. like, the main concern. I mean, he said it's... This, this game's probably been in development yeah, no, for, like, I, I five, six so. years like, or longer. Look, so. It does. How not? Because I'm, said, I'm, it I'm, came I'm, out to the uh, design on. stuff that's going on that's going to be featured in the game, and this screams to me that they saw the praise that they got from Western developers, like, oh shit, we need to capitalize on this, and they totally developed on that praise. Well, did, did what has? But what if it's good? good? It's conjecture, though. What uh, if it's like, well designed? Yeah, then it's not going to be. How yeah, amazing, a, and I can make the cool. It's going to be, be better. Awful. Like, oh, like God, it, it could be, it could be mixed. It could be it's, some it's, really good stuff and some bad stuff, but it's not going to be like one or the other. Right, right. I'm exaggerating. It'll be, so it'll be some Simon, good stuff, but I think there'll be Simon, a lot of it. Simon, yeah. Do you think there are, are there any open world RPGs out there that you think are good? Do you want? Do you want me to wait? Do you want me to give? Yeah, you blasted Witcher three, and that's not even out yet. Do you want me to give an objective answer? Well, like I I know this is not the best example, but when I think of good open world RPGs, Fallout is what comes to my mind. New Vegas specifically. um, That's a good example. Yeah. So that's that's kind of obviously Xenoblade is quite different from Fallout, and it's a Japanese developer. But uh, that's like, well, if we're looking at good RPGs that are open world in the design and not linear, that's kind of what comes to mind as a good example. Something like Skyrim, which is the same developer, or actually, no, not the same developer as Fallout. Um, uh, Skyrim did actually get some criticism for being just too damn big and there's nothing to do. Like, shallow was a puddle the whole way through, or whatever people said. Whereas Oblivion so, was packed with things to do, in my opinion. Right, so like, there's a there, it's possible for them to do this well. It's just, will they do I just, it well? I just can't imagine because Xenoblade was already big. I just can't imagine a map being five times bigger than Xenoblade. Like, developer, by the way, being good. I, I, well, at the end of the day, you get to fly in giant robots so that it earns a buy from me. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. I will say, I just want to point in that Skyrim I would have much Fallout rather than Vegas. Yeah, that's not Vegas, though. So. Like, if I can have a Monster Hunter game that size, it's fucking awesome. Power to them. If I, do I want an RPG? See, that's, like, what's the like, double standards? I mean... Like, the combat system in Xenoblade, like, it's not the most compelling thing in the world. Especially for a map that size is not going to be the comp- most compelling thing in the world. Well, it, it's more, it's, it's more action-y Hunter now. Like, which I think makes sense. Um... If 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 the scope is going to increase like that, I do think the battle system from Xenoblade did have to speed up a little. Yeah, it's, I still don't think it'll be fast enough. Like, I think the 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 more important thing is like just thinking about the encounters yeah. in an open world. Just taking that aspect, like okay, you're fighting this one enemy, and then this other enemy comes you know across and just done? starts attacking Instead you. Of using, like, like the, building off of the Xenoblade battle system, they should have just done redone it completely. Go something along the lines of like Kingdom Hearts. Like, don't have a basic going. Oh no! No, don't sorry. Kingdom Kingdom Hearts Hearts have a work by sleep where yeah. you have a command deck, like a, a skill set of abilities you can craft yourself. Because it would fit, it would fit within the design nature of choice, which open world implies. And you can have basic attacks that you can do, which you can control and time. Like that's the system that'd be suited for this, but. To me, it seems like, oh, we're just going to build off of something that's already existing. This is going to just play like a crappy MMO, in my opinion. It's not even that. Like, Well, it's... So, I mean, to kind of like wrap this up, I mean, it's like, clearly, this is going to come out soon. Level 5, uh, 
the president, is, the CEO has always been talking about how he wants to make an open world game, and so it seems like Level Five's next big game is not that, not Wonder Flick or whatever, it's something fail. else. But uh, man, you suck. Mister? I just want to say this time, you suck. All the time, but no, no, it's it's. I mean, Witcher Three is going to come out soon. We'll see how that does with a gigantic open world. So it's it's it. Yeah, obviously that's the way RPGs are going oh, in the future. So and so I, as you said, Final Fantasy Fifteen. So it's like, are they going to create a world with meaningful content? It's that's it's kind of up to the developers to, to come. Never going to come out. <laughs> oh, you're so clever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they all those guys. Okay, I will say this though: Zestiria will probably suck more than Xenoblade Chronicles X will. Probably. I mean, I've been Xenoblade Chronicles X, so I can't make a judgment. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> sure, pass a lot of judgment on it. Well, I mean, I can't <laughs> judge it on an apples to apples basis because one, I haven't played, and one, I have played. I can just judge Xenoblade by even itself, but comparison judgment, I can't do that. Not yet. I want to shit, though. If Xenoblade Chronicles X gets, like, uh, 85% or over Metacritic, I'll be, like, damn surprised. Fuck Metacritic. But anyway, no, I'm just kidding. I love Metacritic. I think we had a good discussion today (laughs) on lots of things. Yeah. Let's... So, let's just wrap things up. And so, uh... Uh, I want to mention some things on the site right now that you guys should really check out. So, um, I spent a lot of time on this. You can check out um, 200 upcoming RPGs. They're not all RPGs. There's adventure games on there, some visual novels. But for the most part, they're RPGs. Check out those articles. I spent a lot of time on it. I hope you guys liked it. I hope you have, If you haven't checked it out, visit our site at RPGsite.net. Um, also, we Alex posted a spotlight on Midgar for Final Fantasy VII's birthday that fell on Saturday, January 31st of this year. So um, check it out, 18th birthday. It's a very good article. It's been making the rounds, and a lot of people seem to like it. So it's been cool to see how that's been showing up on places like Reddit. So take a look at it. Uh, you can find us on Twitter at, at RPG Site. You can find us on YouTube at youtube.com slash rpgsite.net. Facebook, excuse me, RPG Site Net is our username. Uh, Facebook, RPG Site Net. Um, and you can also subscribe to us on iTunes at TetraCast. Just, just do a search for a, it, you'll find it. I have, I have a so, question, Zach. One, one last question. Yes? It's a short answer. It's, it's, it's going to be a short answer. What is actually, since this is the first, like, official podcast of the year, sort of, because we want to do RPG of the year, what is everyone's yeah. most excited RPG for this year? Huh. Well, now that it got announced, it's going to be Fire That's... Emblem F. <laughs> <laughs> I would say Witcher 3. I loved Witcher 2, so I can't wait for Witcher 3. I'm probably most excited for Majora's Mask, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> That's <laughs> not even an RPG! Shut up. <laughs> yeah! Okay, outside of that. Can't count that. Like, okay. Yeah, like, it's just that, that's kind of a different one because I, like, I know exactly what I'm getting with it. We're going to uh, cover it, yeah. Yeah. I don't know, really. Play Fire Emblem. Did you, you look at any of those RPGs I announced? Persona 5 is going to come out Adam this year? Is not excited for this year. For RPGs. You're not excited for Persona 5, Adam? One RPG. One RPG. One RPG that I'm actually kind of have like an interest in that I wasn't really aware of was the new one from Experience and Nisa, Operation Tokyo Legacy. It's oh, it's yeah, like a dungeon cool. crawler in the wizardry style, and I've been playing a number of those recently, and it seems to have it seems to avoid some of the issues I had with Demon Gaze. So uh, I'm Good. it's like if it can take some of the things I like and remove some of the things I didn't like, and I'm it's also to. right. <laughs> I think the, I want to mention another game, Insomnia. It's a steampunk RPG that is for an indie game. It's pretty ambitious. Oh, you should really check it out. I think that's another. I'm also pretty <laughs> excited. I'm also pretty excited for uh, Double Survivor Two from Shin Megami Tensei. Oh. So. Um, probably hey, Persona Five, and um, also there's this uh, indie RPG that just came out called Darkest Dungeon that I really want to try. That yeah, looks I'm, really I'm good. I'm pretty excited to try that one out too. I, I expect my entire party to fall underneath, like becoming masochistic or something, because they all get like status effects. It's that sounds. It looks really good. It's from like a GAF member, isn't it, Simon? Yeah, like it's so. from a Neo GAF member. Who made it. He had a yeah. Kickstarter. That's successful. My, so yeah, uh, Bloodborne. 
probably cover that on the site. That's a fair answer. Yeah. Bloodborne, yeah. That's, it's going to be good. Probably be game of the year, too. Unlike, I really hope this one becomes game of the year. Unless Fire really Emblem for, comes out. I was really excited for Dark Souls 2, <laughs> only to be sorely disappointed by how shitty Dark Souls 2 was. So we just, we just had our game of the year argument, so we're going to argue 2015 already? Well, Fire Emblem, if comes out, it's not an argument. Oh. It's already decided. I can live with that. I think the I Witcher live 3 is already As long as they don't make the shitty dance. Okay, Witcher okay, 3 okay. looks incredible! I, I, I think we're done. All right. All right. Well, thanks a lot for joining us. Thank you, Simon. Thank you, Darren. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Liz. Thank you very much for joining us today um, on this episode, this month's episode of the TetraCast. 